game just started wonderful let me do my proper youtube intro um this is the second best of five in the round of 16 i just explained it to the viewers on twitch but the with the way the 2v2 world cup is set up if two teams from the same country advance to the round of 16 they have to cross each other out knock each other out uh here we have mr yo playing as the franks for china a he is the best player in china and has been for a long time and then he's teamed up with Lix, who's been his boy for a long time. Lix is playing as the Chinese. Up against them in the red, we have Tim. Uh, Tim is playing as the Ethiopians. And then in the yellow, we have CL, who's playing as the Slavs. Now, Tim and CL, they were second in their group after Spain, if I recall. They're a very good team. They're also a very uh, experienced and seasoned team. I think both of them have been playing for well over a decade. And I would say that they're... Their skill set is definitely a little more, um, a, a little more uh, unrefined. Like Tim and CL, it comes purely down to strategy. In most cases, you're not going to see a lot of quick walls from those players. In fact, you're going to see a lot of stone walls from the players at times. So if Tim and CL are going to win against Yo and Lix, it's not going to be with quick micro. It's not going to be with quick walls. It's going to be with good solid strategy, and it's it's a struggle because. We're looking at Yo and Lix as the favorites to maybe win the whole tournament. Um, they were, they actually lost to Finland in 2018. And they lost to Finland in 2018, 4-2. Uh, to two, And so they did, no, 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 excuse me. Yeah, they lost to Finland 4-2 to two in the finals, right? Um, and teams like Norway didn't make the finals. Teams like Vietnam didn't make the finals. But Yo and Lix did. So, yeah, I, I think if nothing else, if we see... Uh, Yo and Lix win today, which many people are expecting. Uh, we are going to get a good taste of what they're able to bring to the tournament. Because this will be their first real test. They were not at all tested in their group. I'm excited for it. So, um, in fact, I don't think they lost a single game yet this tournament. Whereas China B, no offense to my UK viewers, China B lost a game to the UK. Um, and they also lost a set to Spain. So on the right side, we have Franks for Yo. Um, and he's up against CL, who's Slav. So we'll have those scout players on the right side. On the left side, we're going to have the Archer roll. Um, big thing that is really impressive and fun to watch about China A is that Lix tends to go really YOLO um, in many different ways. But he tends to go very aggressive. And it's his aggression which opens up Yo to carry. Because everyone's worried about Lix for a while. And then Yo can do his thing. We saw a bit of that with Russia yesterday against Germany. If you watch that set, um, you know, it just there were a few moments where Vinchester would get into a very good position because of his teammate or just because of, of how the game was developing. So we'll see. Um, looking forward to this. Time, please, T90. Great work. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The time should be there. And I think everything else is set. All the little things that you guys really like to see are on your screens, right? I think so. Except for the mustache, maybe. <laughs> is it possible to at least show Vil counts all game long? What, what, what's here, people? People. Listen, I, I'm here, you know, to, to cast games, and I'm here to show you guys the content. But <laughs> when people are asking for things that are right here, <laughs> um, it can get a little bit annoying sometimes. <laughs> now, if I click things, right, that will, that will disappear. I'll do my best. I have to check HP on units here or there, but... Uh, yeah, that information is is there for you. So get ready uh, for an interesting best of five here. Yeah, if I had to guess, we didn't have time beforehand. So I'm going to sip my coffee here too. It's blue. If I had to guess, I would say 3-1 today for China A. Yo and Licks are simply too strong. Uh, but Tim's going to steal some goats. Like, thank you very much. I'm going to take those goats. I'm going to take them home. Actually adding a barracks. So this does look like a bit of a man-at-arms build for Tim. Everyone's on the way to Feudal Age. Hmm. Here are the scouts engaging. Now, this is where I can't show you the Vil counts. It's very close. Lix could consider sending the villager in here to change the fight. Still 18 HP for both of them there. What's fascinating about this is Lix is choosing to stay at home with this scout and wall. He's going straight archer, so he's not going man-at-arms. He's got forward berries... Very difficult to wall up. So this could actually be a really good counter to that straight archer play. Uh, okay, I'll explain this as well. 
Um, I don't know a lot about it right now, but we added it today. Uh, this will also be more refined throughout the later stages of the tournament. But we have a, a hello, Project Belgium. You're one off from being very nice. Uh, we have a, an extension, which is on the Twitch page. And it allows you to pull up the information about the civilizations that are in this game right now. Um, again, I didn't even know it was going to be at. Well, we talked about it being added today, but I haven't tested it myself. So click the buttons, test it out, and let us know what you think. <laughs> I'll try and get a little bit of a, a little bit of information about that once I've tested it myself. And maybe Felix or Overlay guy who's in chat will be able to help out. You see CL here stonewalling? This is such a CL thing to do. So many players are not going to stonewall early. And I think China B is saying, we know in normal situations that we're not going to be that... We're not going to be able to play the meta against Lix and Yo. So Tim's coming forward. He's going man at our tower in a team game. Now there's reasons you don't see this a lot. Because in a 1v1... There's just one person here to deal with it. They have the counter tower. They can only make so much military. It's awkward. In 2v2, Mr. Yo can swing over right with his scouts. But this is a good start for Tim. The pressure is on. And Lix is going to try and wall in this tower. Because otherwise, the men at arms will get in. That's good walling here from Lix. But guys, this is awkward for Lix. Lix will be off of berries. Lix could lose a villager. Lix will lose one villager. The pressure is on. Wow. That tower still hasn't gone up yet. Two villagers down. What on earth is this start? Now notice on the other side you have CL stonewalling. This is China power. Let's go. I, I get so hype about CL and Tim because they're so unorthodox, like I said, in Dark Age. And there's very few pro players who can get away with stonewalling this early. No other pros do it because they want town centers later. But CL does it all the time, and this is probably to give CL the carry position, so he's never threatened. It comes down to how much is Tim going to lose here, as Yo shows up with three Frank scouts. He has the extra HP. I think Tim is going to be brutalized at some point. Look at his base. There's range for Lix, too, so Lix is going to be sending archers out. And Yo has just decides to head over to Tim. So let's see what China A can do. They've already done a lot of damage to Lix, but Lix was Chinese, so we started with more villagers anyhow. Uh, CL will have some scouts, and CL scouts could go to Lix, and they might even head over to Tim to save him if need be. What? Ducks the Prime. What are you waiting for? Ducks the Prime with the sellout. Thank you for that. Tim walling up a little bit, has some spears at home. Update back over here as CL comes in. This isn't something that Lix was expecting just yet, I'm sure. Lix has to react to this, and man, is this messy right now. This is ridiculous, guys. I have not seen a single successful tower rush in the entire tournament so far. That's right. A single one. And Lix is going to lose. Lix has lost five vils. Lix has lost five villagers already. And is off of gold when Lix wants to make archers. Speaking of dead villagers, uh, there are five here for the taking for Yo. Yo is untouched at home. Yo will get one. Yo will get two. Yo should get three here if he does this correctly. When he does, counter tower now for Lix and the scouts for CL are actually heading over towards Yo. Yo should be fully walled. If he's not fully walled, I'd be very surprised. What a game, man. This is, this is an excellent way to start off a series because we're seeing... Very different strategies already. And this is on Arabia. Arabia is not supposed to offer this. This is supposed to be, you know, the home maps are supposed to offer that variety. But stone walls for CL. He's Slav, so he's got those crazy farms. And he's completely safe back here. See if Yo can compete with the uptimes. CL made a lot of scouts. And Yo's made quite a few as well. And I think everyone's going to head over to the left side. Either Tim or Lix now. Lix has probably said, hey, yo, send me military. Yo, send me military. And uh, so yo's on the way. And then CL has probably heard from Tim. Hey, he's still open here. Bring your scouts here if you can't do damage to yo. And Tim with the really annoying garrisons. Well played. 
And CL's gonna loop in on this side. Now, the wood line could be hit, but I feel like that's quick wallable. Let's see if Lix can quick wall this. He... He... Uh, he reacts nicely. There's still a hole. Very well done. Very well done. And meanwhile, Mr. Yo, he's not killed a lot of villagers. He's only killed one. But that tower does go down, and that's exactly what China would have wanted. Now, I say China because that's a habit as a caster to talk about the country that's playing. But when it's China v. China, you can't say that. <laughs> so I'll, I'll work to improve on that. I'll be more creative. I'm sorry. But guys, the reason that the tower rush is so good in 1v1s sometimes is because you stop someone from walling up. If you get the towers to this position, they cannot wall. And then knights can run into, into uh, the eco. So in the classic days, it was very common in Hun Wars to see like spearmen towers and then just turn that right into knights in the castle. ZL is already 35% of the way to the next stage. Has pretty solid eco here with slabs. Could either boom or just make the knights. Lix isn't anywhere close to clicking up and Mr. Yo has just now clicked up. So it will really be interesting. Pay attention to what CL is able to do at Lix's base. I mean, this was double trouble for Lix. Lix has golds back here, but can't take them because CL has the scouts. Actually, has Lix scouted those golds? Yeah, Lix has scouted them. So you're off gold as the archer player, but also he's off fairies, which really uh, put his eco in a rough spot. Now, Tim at home is just making spearmen. Wow, that tower knife to scout. And he's walled up for the most part. It's going to be messy. And even he will die tonight. He's got enough spearmen. And now we have more quick walls from Licks. Wow, the level these teams are bringing is nuts. I just wonder if there's a point where Licks can go back to the gold safely. Is this it now? Licks is thinking about it. CL's thinking about the gold being back there. A lot of these scouts are weak. And then... Oh, Mr. Yo engaging on the farms! You think that's safe, Mr. Farmer? Think again. The two villagers down. All right. Ow. Exactly what I would have wanted to start off the day as another villager will go down. Just him things. Um, I, I wanted to have a competitive series. I wanted it to have variety of strategy. And we have just that. Now, the last thing you want to do is Yo snipes another villager on the farm. What a great job from Yo. But the last thing you want to do if you're CL is send anything over to help Tim right now. You want to send your first wave of knights all the way over here to where that gold is. Yeah, where he just lost those scouts. Imagine having to double tower the back of your base. You look at this base, you think this is perfect. You think this is a gift from the Age of Empires gods. Nope. And maybe the gods like towers. I don't know. Also, the gods apparently... This might be a... This might be a little farm dance to bring favor upon the people. I, I don't know what that is beyond a bug. Which is getting caught on the blacksmith. That's that's one of the most annoying bugs that was introduced to the game over the last couple months. <laughs> Cicada villager. <laughs> Anyways, you, you can just re-click, like, re-task them, and sometimes it fixes that problem. But that farmer is essentially idle right now. And what a good job from Lix in this game, man. Like, what a what a fantastic job from China A. Look at this. He was gonna get another villager kill. The amount that they've had to deal with and how they've been able to hold has been very impressive. I mean, Lick still hasn't clicked up to the next age. Tim still hasn't clicked up to the next age. Tim is going to take the berries here. This is redonkulous, man. But the more I watch this, the more it, it just confirms that I think this will come down to CL and Yo. And who would you prefer to have? Would you prefer to have Yo carrying or CL carrying? I mean, let's be real. I'm I love CL. I think he's a creative player. But Mr. Yo is one of the best players ever in this game. And he's he's been amongst the top for almost like six, seven years, something crazy like that. So maybe even more than that, actually. I think it's always gonna be Mr. Yo, and Mr. Yo is on three town centers, so you can compare the Vil counts here. And also make sure to compare the military and just the positioning of the military as well. CL, since this is a 1v1, could get away with switching into pikemen. Get away with adding a lot of monks, something you wouldn't normally see if there's a lot of archers. And Lix is 
Still making some archers and licks is on the way to Castle Age. That is not the case for Tim. Tim is very far from it. What a way to start off the series. And we're slowly seeing this game shift into China A's favor. Sneaky, sneaky tower from Tim. Wonder if Lix is going to be aware of that, though. Because I think Tim just used those villagers to kill the scout. I think he's worried, Tim, that he'll lose those villagers. Got a lot of forward vills right now. Yo also has more military out in the field, but I think that includes the scouts that were out there before. It's interesting how many spearmen Tim is making. What are these vills doing now? What are you doing, Tim? Look how much stone he has. If he had a market, he could sell a stone, buy food, and go up. Just Tim things. Just now making an archer range. 26-minute archer range. Screw the meta. And there's the forward monk from CL. CL. What? That, that's because of the dance. That's because they were calling upon the Age of Empires gods. I don't see how that's not a conversion there. And Yo does have the monks to send in, and you'll see how little the spearmen do from Tim against knights with this amount of upgrades. The towers still stand, which will make life awkward for Lix. But Lix, until now, has had stones, so could maybe think about building a castle here and shooting those towers down. Now, it's like every time Yo goes to hit Tim, Lix is telling Yo, you need to come save me. <laughs> Um, so here comes Yo. And there's the castle for Lix. Look at this little base! This is so messy. And that, that castle should go up. So again, advantage China A. Tim with some dangerous, dangerous forward villagers will finish that tower. And he is on the way to Castle H2 now. So look at the vill counts. It's very even between CL and it's very even between Yo. These towers should stay up. In fact... I think this tower is not rangeable by the castle, so that's going to be a real pain, because that can still range that gold. Um, economically, Tim and Lix are pretty even. And Yo, wow! Yo tried to use the scouts to take out the monks and failed there. Kind of feel like this is still going to be an even game, the exception of the military in a second. Because Tim is making a lot of spearmen. He's not making a lot of archers. So... Maybe for China A, the fact that they'll have some archers with knights will be better for them. But CL, he's not out popping with military as he gets one, two conversions. But it seems like while the stats say that Yo has more military most of the time, CL's in better position with more numbers. Like, that was really good to get two conversions there. And this is really good too. It's not allowing Licks to push out. CL on three town centers, 33 farms. Yo is at 26 farms, but look at Yo's Q. Yeah, Yo is really kicking it up a notch with the night production. Same could be said for CL, though. And now Ethiopians get the free pikemen upgrade, so Tim's Q spearmen are now pikemen. But I think this comes down to how long the towers stay up. If guard tower comes in, how many archers come out. This is ridiculous. I'm going to re-explain some things because some people just got here and this is a common question. Um, the reason we have China v. China right now and the reason we'll have Brazil v. Brazil and Vietnam v. Vietnam and a few countries facing off against each other in the round of 16 is because with the way we've set up the rules, uh, if one country has two teams advancing to the round of 16, they will knock each other out at that stage. That is to prevent a final being China v. China or Vietnam v. Vietnam, etc. So, the reason's pretty simple. It's because we feel as... As Yo... Yo is going all in Castle Age here. Hold on a second. I'm gonna... I'm gonna have to break this down because... You have CL clearly trying to go in. And Yo is gonna go all in Knights. So, he's gonna have more Knights. And he's gonna mix in Pikemen. And this might be the perfect timing for them. If they can hit CL before he's in Imperial. Look at that. 33 knights against 25 knights plus pikemen soon with big upgrade. But um, but yeah, um, reasoning's pretty simple. It's because it's not a World Cup if you have these teams facing off against each other in the semifinals. So Age of Empires is a really unique community. Uh, 
you know, certain countries have so many good teams. So we split it up like that. All right. Why do you get French ads on my stream? I'm not sure. You're not the first person to say that to me. A CL pushes forward. I don't think he realizes how awkward this is about to be for him. He's thinking he's winning. And then Yo shows up with... With 30% more knights and with more upgrades. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's not good. I don't think Tim's crossbows are going to be able to help there. Oh, jeez. Now, Cavalier could help, but Cavalier takes a lot of time, as does going to Imperial. So, yo, treating this like a 1v1 just says, I'm going to spam everything I can in Castle Age. Forget about Imp. I'm going to take control away from you and not... Not only that, I'm going to drop a forward castle on your face to send a message to never do that to my boy Lix. Never, ever, ever tower rush my friend. Because if you do, I'll castle rush you, CL. What a statement here. No, you think you're forward. No, I'm forward. 37 knights against... Ooh, 39 knights. And there's crossbows. Still, I think Yo's pulled the proper amount of villagers to be able to get this castle up. Let's see. It's an awkward area for him to engage in. And you could make an argument that if this is denied, this is a throw from China A, and the all-in castle age play is not working. Will the castle go up? CL says, no, we understand the forward. You don't understand the ways of the forward. No way! It's a Dow castle. CL is an imp. And they're taking a fight, which is actually a pretty decent fight. What a game! Meanwhile, we haven't been talking about it, but Tim, he's losing villagers. He doesn't care about his villagers. He's just been a pain. He made Lix build a castle here, right next to the other castle. And if CL can get Cavalier now, CL can just kill everything. The Slabs do not get access to Paladin. It's a big thing for them if the game goes late. Yo... Is on his own here. Now we'll opt to make a defensive castle. But my goodness, I, I really felt like Yo was going to be able to push there, and CL just kicked it into overdrive with the production. And I do think Tim's crossbows helped a little bit against the pikes, and they will need be needed still, as a lot of these knights are still weak. But when you get the armor and you get cavalier, at that point, Castle Age pikemen, they're not that really, they're not very terrifying. And this could be two Doubt Castles in one game. This engagement is before the upgrades. Something that CL might live to regret. He's waiting. He's waiting. Now he has armor. And now he can fight. Yeah, you can fight with even just the armor here. Downside is you might not deny the castle. But I think that CL needs to swing some Cav right over to Lick soon. A castle will go up for Mr. Yo. But there's not a lot stopping CL from fighting underneath this castle and is there something that's going to stop China B from getting the game one victory? This is insane. It all stemmed from them not playing meta against Yo and Lix. Understanding that Yo and Lix are fantastic with the meta. I think the game ends here, guys. I think this is GG. Yo has he invested so much in the Castle Age army. He has not clicked up to Imp yet. If he clicks up to Imp now, he won't have any defense for himself. And the amount of defense that he could make for himself is not going to be enough. Juku Nu, they're, they're dead Onu. This castle is going to get trebbed down. And you know what's good for Tim is Tim can just free boom. Tim is, is protecting himself. A great job with the crossbows. But Tim can just free boom and do whatever he pleases. This is the Imperial Age Town Center for Yo. He's actually clicked up the Imp. That's his Imp TC. So he actually needs to cancel Imperial and switch it to a safer Town Center. And there he does it. Yeah, he cancels Imperial and switches it back here. But that's wasted time. And he's just getting thrashed at the moment. Here's a signal from Lix. Oh, we actually have a lot of Knights over here from Yo. I guess they're useful over here. Not useful elsewhere. But... You know, the way I understood it, I thought this was supposed to be Yo versus CL, and now it's going to be CL against Lix at this point. Lix is... I, I don't know why Lix is here with this many villagers. That's kind of funny. But Yo is getting massacred, and he will continue to get massacred, and he will not have the eco to make many more knights. 
Do not underestimate Tim and CL. Yes, it's true. They don't have that technical skill. They're not quite as quick. At least it doesn't seem that way. Yes, they have to rely on towers and stone walls at times. But they can get it done even if it's not meta. This is very exciting, man. This is very exciting. And now we have a pause from Tim. <laughs> I, I, this is kind of an awkward time to pause, to be honest. Like, I thought the game was going to end. But we're casting the games live now, so... Cigarette time? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, stretch the old... Stretch out the fingers? Well, actually, um... I think both Tim and CL are fathers. And, um... The... In the group stage, they had to GG a game really early when they were winning. Because CL had to do something with his son. Uh, and I think he was sick at the times. And thankfully, I think his son's doing well now. But it's really interesting to me. I'm... I'm not a dad, but I would like to consider myself a pro gamer. I think it's pretty cool. Like, these guys have a few kids, and they just show up, and they're they're beasting it up right now. And maybe his kid's crying. Who knows? Um, there's some sling, so Tim sends some wood over. They're probably talking strategy, to be honest. Because <laughs> um, immediately after that, Tim sends some wood to CL. But guys, I I don't think... I mean, Tim's just going to be super annoying with Mackinels on the side. He's got crossbow numbers here. I just don't see how China A can possibly win this right now. Lix is getting coinage so he can sling resources over to Yo. Maybe send him food to get to some knights, but... Yes, while Franks are better than Slavs in post-Imperial, that's when the trade's set up and that's when teams are alive. Yo is at 50 pop. This is insane. And Yo has 32 villagers, 29 of which are idle. He, he doesn't have a working economy right now. And Tim is about to up to Imp. And again, just how annoying he's being is hilarious. Lix goes over here to chop wood. Surprise, Tim's there. You're chasing down Tim. Tim's running away. Tim's over here. He's just killed Yo's villagers as Yo is sending them to God knows where. Lix does have a random castle in the middle because of that gold. But we can't see the GGs because there's no chat on live games. Uh, thanks to E for that, but thanks to, to Tim and CL for starting off this series with a bang. Jeez, man. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. Let's talk about the core differences between what CL and Tim did and what everyone else has done in this tournament. CL's the only one in the tournament to consistently stone walls made it to the stone wall excuse me made it to the round of 16. tim there is the only one to have a successful forward i've seen it die every other time i think so we'll go on to china's home map next and when i say china i mean china a <laughs> and i haven't even been able to see what their home maps are but I think their home maps are going to be a little standardish, um, while the maps are going to be a bit wackier for China B. And somehow China B, if they're going to win this series today, they're going to have to find ways to go against that meta. A CL with the carry, twenty-two thousand food collected, fourteen thousand gold collected. It really seemed like the faster imp was going to be. Way too little for CL. But in the end, that's what won him the game. That and denying the castle, Yo felt like he'd be in a stronger position. You know, in that fight, in that big fight, which was the deciding fight, Tim brought over 20 crossbows. And I think the crossbows made the difference because the pikemen did not matter then. Anyways, let's back out here. Oh, I almost knocked over my coffee. That would have been bad. Um... I think Team Islands is probably one of the home maps for China A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I would be very surprised if they didn't pick that. They've been picking that for years as home maps. Um, and they have Golden Pit and Team Islands as options for the next game. Let me just cross off some sieves here. And we'll be in the next game. This is live, so it should be shortly. I'm so pumped, man. I'm so pumped, and I'm not I'm not necessarily pumped because I think that this means that China B is going to win. I'm reasonable. I still think China A can win. 
I still think they should win because they're that good. But it's so exciting to me to see a series start off like that. But China A is probably the best Team Islands team in the world. Um, CL going landing and Yo winning full water can just be nuts. Um, sorry, there's a lot of stuff going on on my screen here, but I should be able to knock off these sieves. No Mayans, no Khmer in the whole set. That was globally banned at the start. And then the snipe for Berbers and Saracens. That's actually really interesting. Because the way it works is you, you global ban, you each global ban a sieve, then you pick all your sieves. And after the sieves have been picked, you, um, after the sieves have been picked, you snipe one. And they sniped Saracens and Berbers. Interesting. Hey, by the way, is my mic a little bit lower than what you guys are used to? Or is the level fine? I, uh, the story I didn't get to finish telling you guys was that I accidentally knocked over my microphone and it fell to the ground last night. And when that happened, all the cords, well, it pulled my mixer off my desk and that also fell to the floor and all the cords came out. Here, let me, is this a little louder now? Is this better? Is, is this still fine? I was not drunk. I just, I'm, I'm a klutz. There's a difference. Okay, so what was it? Chinese and Franks is removed, and then we had, uh... It's good. Okay, cool. Slavs and Ethiopians. Perfect. Thank you, Starbage. Um, wow, we missed a lot of names there, but thank you. I, I think it's interesting for people on YouTube who are listening now, because people on YouTube get to see what it's like on the stream now. So they get to, to see what the filler time is like. I see that the next map is going to be Golden Pit, so not Team Islands. And what's really interesting is it was Team Islands when I first found their game room. And then they switched it to Golden Pit. That's fascinating. So maybe they felt like, hmm, even though we're really confident on Team Islands, maybe it's a bit too risky against this China B team. Especially if, if using Team Islands incorporates a forward. I don't know if I'd want to give CL and Tim that map. Not just yet, anyways. Uh, thank you, Hannibal's Lecture, for the seven. Thank you, Ray Rex, for the prime. Hello, SFB. Thanks for raiding our game last night. First time we'd picked O2 up since the early 2000s. Was a wait, blast. Wait a second, wait a second. Were you part of the group that we raided last night? That was so fun. Man, it... I feel so fortunate for a lot of different reasons, but when we raid someone on Twitch and send all the viewers to them, and they're like, what, T90? He's such a cool guy. You know, that, I don't know, man. That made my night. Thank you, and I'm glad you guys enjoyed the raid. I think that's what you're referring to. There were a few of you guys playing those games last night. Stroke your ego. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's just like, I never, you know, my whole normal life, off the internet, I meet someone and they're just like, what's what's an age of empire, you know? I never meet anyone who's a fan in real life. I rarely do that. Or anyone who knows age of empire. So to hear the word spoken is different than someone in chat or in a comment saying something. That's all. I'm not flexing. Yeah. What's an age of empire? Anyways, thank you, Caffeine Powered. I will uh, buy some precious salmon with that tonight. Big fan of T90. He's a cool guy. <laughs> See, it's not the same. It doesn't feel the same. Bunny Warren, thank you for the 32 months, though. Also, salutes in chat, please, for Cape Man. Salutes or smileys if you don't have the salutes. Uh, Cape Man has now been subbed to the channel for four years. And Cape Man has been through a lot. I remember when Cape Man... He's like, man, T90, I'm nervous. I'm moving to a different country for a job. I'm moving away from my family. I don't know what to do. Man, T90, all of my resources have been walled in on Black Forest. If only my pocket would help me. I was his pocket. Sorry. Um, thank you, Cape Man, for everything. Uh, Chaboy, I'm proud of you, by the way. I, apparently, things are going pretty well. So, Danton, Cosmic, Pico... I opens, thank you. Every every uh, sub does contribute one dollar to the total prize pool. Everyone, they have not started game two. 
Now, if you if you're even tempted to say start the game already, just remember this next time you request live games. There will be delays, but it will make the action worth My it. My new baby is on the way. Give me a name. Give it. Give to me. Your and new baby's on the way. Give. That would be, actually be really funny if someone let me name their child. That would also borderline on child abuse. Um, let's see. You're having a new child. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Guckenheimer. Guarantee you no one else is named Guckenheimer. Guckenheimer, please. And you know what? However you want to spell it, you can spell it. That's on you. You're the parent. So growing up, or not growing up, looks like we're in the next game. Um, so my brother's 11 years older than me. And so when he was 10-ish years old, my parents went up to him and they were like, hey, you're going to have a younger brother. And he was like, what, really? You know, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know exactly what he said. But as a joke, they asked my brother, what do you want to name him? We've decided on either Tristan or Guckenheimer. As a complete joke. I don't know where Guckenheimer came from. And <laughs> my brother was like, let's do Tristan, <laughs> obviously. And my parents were like, eh, you know what? We're actually going to name him Guckenheimer. We like Guckenheimer a lot more. And apparently my brother cried like he was bawling. And he wasn't bawling because his brother was going to get made fun of for Guckenheimer. No, he was crying because he thought his friends would make fun of him for having a brother named Guckenheimer. The absolute selfishness of my 10-year-old older bro. He cried for his own reputation. He didn't care about me. By the way, if I was a girl, I would have been named Michelle. I'm really happy that I ended up... No offense to any Michelles out there. We just lost our Michelle audience. But I just can't consider myself Michelle. Uh, game two. China B. Okay, the civs are not... The civ images aren't showing up there. This is awkward. <laughs> So we'll have to pay attention. We'll get that fixed. Yo's looking to recover for his team. Bulgarians! What? Bulgarians! He picked Bulgarians game two and they're down a game? Yo is Bulgarians in the blue. And then we have Lix in the green. Lix is playing as the Tatars. And then in the yellow we have CL. CL is playing as the Persians. And in the red we have Tim. Tim is playing as the Burmese. What the? He, these civilizations are very um, surprising. Do they, do they realize we're playing on the patch from two weeks ago? Do they realize this isn't the current patch? They had to backdate their game before playing today. I mean, here's the deal. I've always felt like Bulgarians are pretty solid decent. Uh, pretty freaking decent. And pretty solid. But I don't know if they're quite as solid in this role as other civs. You do have to consider what civs you want to save for future maps. So that's a factor. And we'll find out what those new maps and civs are going to be in a bit. But, um, Bulgarians, they don't have the cheaper blacksmith upgrades like you would have if you play the game right now. And then Tatars don't get additional sheep per town center. I think that's a big change that happened recently. So you're working with the hill bonus. You're working with the dark age sheep bonus. Uh, you're working with the... Ooh, maybe the Krepos if you're Bulgarian. Yeah, I've always felt like Bulgarians could be decent. Maybe he wants to build Krepos in the middle. We'll see. Uh, Burmese? I think we're going to see a forward again. Yo is just paused. What if Yo is like, wait a second, I forgot what patch we're playing on. <laughs> that would be a huge blunder. It is amazing that you're in this spot now. And it's amazing we Wait a second, 359? As always, you do get one restart per best of five. You get one restart per best of five, but you can't change your sieves. So the only reason to restart would be if you didn't like the map or if you lost a bill or something. Restart's a classic thing that's been within age, so... Hi, Michael 90. Michael 90, thank you. I also can't see, if they say re, I can't see anything that's said. Because Microsoft hates me, so... Um, yeah, I, I assume that we're playing on here. 
They pause to discuss it. Lix is probably like, yes, my golds are kind of forward, but I can be fine. My expectation, if we're seeing the standard roles that team games would have, would be Bulgarians would go scouts into knights, and Tatars would go into archers. Maybe even some cav archers. But the only civ that really fits here, in my opinion, is, is CL civ Persians. So I'll tell you what I think we're going to see here. I think we're going to see CL go 21 pop scouts, Stonewall as base, because it's CL. We're going to have Tim go for Man at Arm forward again. And it's just going to be a repeat of game number one, where CL tries to stay really safe. And then CL uh, carries for the win. That's the idea for China B. Uh, I was thinking maybe you could see fast castling here, but it seems way too risky. The map is really open. There's a reason China A want this. It's because China B is known for their walling. Okay, are these games live or recorded? This is live. This is all live. The only time you can see chat is if you download recorded games. But live chat doesn't work, so I can't see if they're talking to each other or not. Dr. Sply, happy Saturday to you too. Should be a great one. I'm so happy, man. I never want to see three O's, you know, and seeing as the underdog is up 1-0 right now, it means we're going to have a very good set to start it all off here. Can you tell us where Lix ranks amongst the Chinese pros? Well, what's interesting about the Chinese pros is very few of them play 1v1. Like, they, very few of them train 1v1s. They're just all really good players that play a lot of team games. So Lix is certainly top five if, as we have the scouts fighting here... I think Yo wins this. Oh! And now... Oh, this is this is a disaster for Yo, actually. Because Yo doesn't know what's coming. He might expect the forward, but what if Tim goes for something ballsy like a fast castle? I think Tim is going to go for a fast castle, and Yo won't be able to scout what's going on now. Interesting. So 3 HP scout for Tim... Tim's still in Dark Age. You have Yo on the way up. This is most definitely for a scout build. And then on this side, we have Lix on the way up. This is the meta. This is Doe. Archers and scouts. We have the walls and the scouts coming for CL. Good gold position. The walls will probably come this way. And Tim is going FC Arambai. <laughs> oh, man. I've, I've never seen it on this map. I remember seeing Fast Castle Conquistadors in the uh, group stage. It was actually Canada B versus Canada A in their group. You only said that Canada B played before they forfeited. But, um, wait a second. Wait a second. Mr. Yo is making some militia here. And they will be man-at-arms pretty soon. Meanwhile, you have Tim and CL working with their scouts together over here, but one scout's super weak. But yeah, anyways, I remember seeing Fast Castle honks, and it did not work because the person who was not going Conquistadors died to a 2v1. Here comes Lix with his scout. He's going to help a bit. Yep, that should thwart CL, and CL has to run away. Man-at-arms come in. I think this is actually a man-at-arm into scout build, which is very rare. But it kind of seems to be the case. No, no, no. He wasn't sure. He's going forward now. This is the correct call from Yo. He do also doesn't know where the stone is, though. Losing that scout was massive. If he comes over here to tower instead of here, I think Tim would prefer that. Hmm. I'm really curious how this is going to go. Coffee 90 says, T90, what happens if a player has to drop out of the tournament because they're sick or something? Um, come on, man. We're talking about pro gamers. We never go outside. We can't get sick. No. On a serious note, um, we would kind of, a, we would, we would deal with the situation if it were to come, you know? So if, if the situation arises, then we deal with it then. We don't have a long list of rules because it would depend. And this is exactly what Yo would have wanted. Because he's taking the Burmese player off of that stone. Good early pressure. Tim has to wall up. Tim has to abandon the stone. The other stone is forward. Now what does Tim do long term? Is it going to be possible for Tim to get to Arambai and even get to Castle? 
Yeah, it, it largely depends on the situation. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. There's the market. There's the blacksmith. Here you have CL with now two scouts, because that tower has ballistics, apparently. And this is kind of flashbacks to game number one, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, in many ways. One player's gone forward with man-at-arms. The scout player comes to help out. The scout player can't help because the man-at-arms are too strong. And we're about to see another tower, and Tim expecting this is going to counter tower. Yo, seeing the counter tower, or it's not really a counter tower because there's no tower yet. It's just going to wall this up and abandon the area. Now, on this side, it does get a little awkward currently for CL because CL can't deal with spearmen and archers. If you, he had all his scouts here, he could consider it, but he does not. So this is looking very good for China A. Also, Yo is completely walled up. Yo is on stone, and Yo is not making anything else. So Yo is going to try and keep Tim away from the Arambai. And you see what Tim's doing now. Tim is probably planning on buying the stone for the Arambai. It sounds crazy. Actually, it might be too crazy. He only has 200-some stone. Not able to offer any support to his teammate, Tim. So CL is going to be under more pressure soon. It'd be very much like CL here, who's just now getting the first wood upgrade. What in the... It'd be very much like him to try and get armor and engage against this. Good work from Yo. Good position for China A. Yo has a hole in his wall? I don't think he does. No, that's not a hole... I don't think he does have a hole in his wall. What does Tim do from here? He can't take stone. Second straight game, we're seeing stone walls from China B. They do not hesitate at all. <laughs> I mean, six villagers walling right now. <laughs> huh. Oh my word. Everything in me just screams. I saw Halas is in chat. Alice is on UKA, and they died to China B in the Decider. Alice, does it... I don't know if he's still here, actually, to ask him. But I know if I were to lose to a team of Stonewalled like this, it bothered me so much. Because I, it just feels so wrong. Let's see if he can buy. Oh my god, he's trying to buy it! <laughs> and the funny thing is, he is 644 stone. He has to buy the other six. Which means he has to purchase another hundred. If he would have had two... If he would have just built a house instead of two more stone walls, this could have been better calculated. There he goes. He's just bought the castle. You're kidding me. Those stone prices have to be so expensive. And now he's going to drop the castle here. And we all know how deadly Arambai can be. And that castle will shoot that tower down, which means he can get his stone back. China be going strong. The old men are not done bog champ. Yeah, China be going strong indeed. What's up, Tarzis? This is great to see. My castle will go up. What's the economy look like for Yo? He makes some house walls. Looks pretty good. I'm excited to see some Krepos. Um, he does not have the resources to go up to Castle Age yet, but his eco is pretty solid. I really want to see some Krepos in this game. The Krepos thing in the middle, instead of casting the middle, could secure those golds. Remember, there's only six tiles of gold at each player's base. The other three tiles are way out there for Tim. So you do need to be desperate for control. I mean, keeping an eye on Lix. Lix obviously swung over here to pressure Tim. Lix has a lot of ranges. He's also adding a third range, so I think we will see Tatar Cav Archers. Tatars get Thumb Ring for free, starting in Castle Age. If they're fighting on top of the hill, they do more damage. And I think a lot of Cav Archers could be an answer to the Arambai. Certainly a lot of crossbows are. Now you have CL on the way to the next stage. CL will go for Knights. And a lot of them. But this just circles back to me wondering what Yo's going to do now. Yo's stonewalling. Because the Arambai can be dangerous and starting to tower. I like the stone walls here because Arambai can melt those palisades. But are we going to see Conix? What on earth is he going to make here? Interesting. Now, I had said in the group stage, and I meant it, that teams were going to pick. They were going to go for different strategies when they were expected to win. So, 
I, I felt as though teams were going to hide their best strats until it mattered. I didn't see Bulgarians to Tars as the best strats. <laughs> Yo and Licks are experienced players too, you know. They it's not the first time they've had to play in a previous version, previous patch. It's not like they would confuse it and think, oh, you know, these new changes that came in recently in ranked games would apply here. There's a lot of reasons we didn't use the new patch. Big, biggest one being, I, I don't want to change balance midway through a $30,000 tournament. You know, it's unfair to the players. But the other one is performance. I actually played some team games on the new patch last night. Oof. <laughs> I don't know if it's worse or better, but... Oh, big engagement! No way! I don't think Lakes expected the Arambai to come in. And fortunately, with the hill bonus, Tatars can hold on a little bit here, but the TC will be denied. The crossbows, what is... It's like there was massive lag for the players there or something. That was very weird. And oh my word, this is huge for CL and Tim. What an upset this would be if the tournament finalists from 2018, Yo and Licks, go down here. So the crossbows went down, the villagers went down, the TC was denied. Unbelievable. What are we witnessing here? Now, update on Yo's situation. Yo's got two stables. Yo does have enough stone to drop a castle or two crepos. He's going to be making knights. There's still 13 crossbows. It feels like 13 crossbows could be enough on their own against the Arambai with ballistics and good micro. But Tim also has knights coming in from CL and don't tell me. Don't tell me this is going to happen again. You're kidding. I mean, at the very least, just denying the TC would be a huge victory for China B. Oh, man. They're going to get more than that, maybe. The micro. The villagers go down. All right. Still a dangerous number of crossbows. He's sticking with crossbows. He's not going into cav archers, but... That's going to be the, the big thing to talk about now with Licks. It's not going to be economy. Because his economy is trash. Now, I regret not getting this up to YouTube. It's something that should have hit YouTube and, and maybe still will. Just a bit delayed. As Yo comes in to build a crep post in the middle. Um, the... More villagers are dying. What the? More villagers are dying. This is ridiculous, man. Like, any time Lick sends Eco forward, it dies. Anyways, what I was going to say, as more villagers are coming for Licks, this is just sloppy now. Okay, it's fine. I, I, I can't complete a thought. My apologies. But there was a game where Licks was down to 25 bills, and the other archer player was on 60, but China A were still able to win because of mass archer numbers. I think that especially matters here, because Arambai can be so deadly against every other unit but mass archers. A double castle Arambai? Maybe triple castle Arambai soon? Arambai only costs wood and gold. You don't need food. Tim only has six on food. He doesn't care about anything except the Arambai. Here's CL. CL building a TC in the middle. CL has chain barding on four knights, but that's not enough knights to take an engagement against this amount of crossbows. And it might be China A's turn to deny a town center. Let's see here. I think the TC will still go up. Oh, it's going to be so close. The micro from Lix. The redemption. The TC goes up. Also, that's a Persian TC, so good luck taking that thing down. Tim's going to drop a castle here. Oh, man. This is a beautiful game. And we're going to see a Crepost from Yo at the same time. So, Crepost is uh, it's like a mini castle. And Crepost are pretty... Well, they're fantastic at locking down areas of the map. You can create your unique unit from them only, but... I don't think we'll see any conics. Instead of making one castle to secure part of the middle, you can make two crepos to secure half the middle and deny these gold. But there's not a lot stopping CL from going this way yet. That's a deadly amount of Arambai, but Lix with his micro. Oh, that's so well done from Lix. Say what you want about the villagers. That wasn't necessarily his fault. But all those Arambai going down, brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal for China B. With Tatars and Bulgarians, mind you. 
Yo has the vill lead, but he's only one villager ahead of CL. But CL doesn't have a town center protecting the gold. I guess neither does Yo. <laughs> that was that was sloppy on so many different levels there from Tim. I don't think they should have taken that fight. I suppose if they didn't take the fight, they would have... They feel a real sense of urgency to secure the mid right now. But... This is looking increasingly difficult for China B players. They can't take gold in the middle comfortably. You can't even take gold over here because of the crossbows. And this TC is going to get rams down. This might actually be close to GG at this point. You can't lose 20 Arambai and get away with it. They're sharing the gold and the stone here. Lick's having an absolute field day here on the hill with Tatars. So rip to these bills. CL, I can guarantee, didn't even want stone. Except for maybe another town center. Is He's got to go out here for gold now. Well played China A, man. China A. <laughs> I was super worried for them. Not after game one, but after you know the mid stages of this game. But now I'm, I'm saying, how can China B even win this one? This is the home map of China A. They've broken the meta. Oh boy. CL has broken some Palisade walls. This could be good. But I've also seen Lix lose villagers on Golden Pit before. He's just... He doesn't care about that. He just needs to have army numbers. He's losing villagers, and he will have the lowest vill count in the game. In fact, there's Arambai from Tim out of nowhere. And they'll also kill villagers. This is a considerable amount of villagers going down. Maybe with a Maganel shot, China B could change it. That might be the way to go, but so many bills down there. Crossbow's still here. Full control of the gold, of the middle, or China A. Would you say Bulgarians have the most iconic, unique unit in the game, Kappa? Oh my god. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> oh god. Yo has 74 villagers. And he's going to drop... He might not even drop a crep post. He might just drop a castle on CL. So yeah, the raids were pretty considerable over here at Lix's base. But when Yo is untouched... Ah! Okay, he's not exactly untouched. But when Yo is a semi-free boom, it's very, very difficult to stop China A. This is going to be a castle. I love how he could make a crep post and that'd be fine. And he's still going to make a castle here. There he goes. There he goes. It's not about winning the game. It's about sending a message. Okay. He's still waiting for the stone. Is he making a crep post at home? I see. Okay. So he's had to make a crep post at home to defend. Now he can make a crep post forward. This is a Persian town center. So it's a pretty bold move to try and take out a Persian TC. I mean, the town center has as much HP as a castle. Which is ridiculous. Wait a second. CL is imping? How is CL imping? With 60 bills. It's actually not his imp TC, but he's imping right now. What the? He's imping with the other town center, so he's going to make it, but look at his resources. <laughs> I This is like... I really don't understand what he gains from imp. If he had a castle, I'd say he could make trebs. That's weird. I mean, the eco is looking fantastic for China A. Not so fantastic for China B. It seems like China A have found their answer. That's so weird. If you have Tim go in, at least Tim has a castle. I know he doesn't have the food eco for it, but still. I will say, China B are not known for resigning early. So expect them to play on. And if there was ever a unit to kill Imperial Age units, if this game goes on and on and on in Castle Age for Tim, it would be Arambai. Now, I don't know if you realized earlier, but he did not have Bloodlines in that big fight earlier. So he, he built the stable. He just now was getting Bloodlines. So he had 60 HP when he should have had 80 HP on those Arambai, which could have made all the difference. And um, I, would, I would love it for Yo to build the town center here. I don't know. He's just going to take the stone. Let's see what China B can do. 
So CL, you've made it to the Imperial Age. Let's pretend, let's pretend we're interviewing him. What's your thought going into Imp? Well, you know, I thought I'd make a monk to get a relic. <clears throat> That's all he's doing! It bothers me so much! I mean, there's not much more he can do, but my point is, is make knights with the thousand food. <laughs> Don't go in! Okay, you see a signal here. Oh boy, oh boy, big fight. How can Lix micro this? Aaron by are so deadly if they get in close. And you have Lix imping at the moment, but Lix will lose every one of his crossbowmen. Does it matter, though, when you have Yo in such a strong position? 100 villagers with the middle. Lix still with the middle. Also, guys, can you remind me if Tatars get Arbalest? I feel like they shouldn't get Arbalest thematically, but also, I never felt like Tatar should get Hand Cannon, and I know they get Hand Cannon, which I don't agree with. So, okay. All right, so they don't get ARP. So you'd want to make a Cab Archer switch then. I mean, you can still get Bracer. You can still get Chemistry, which is still very helpful. And you also could just go Elite Skirm, truthfully. Because there's not a lot of Knights out there from Yellow. Even though Cavalier's on the way. I think he's going home to heal. <laughs> and in doing so, we'll find the, the Villagers here from Yo. Uh, Tim has done a pretty solid job. 86 villagers, and if there was ever a time to pounce, this would be it. And pounce he does. Um, I don't know if you want to give Tatars the hill or how much that even matters when it's close quarters for Aaron Bayan. Wow! Rip to the crossbows. So Tim and CL, they do have a little bit of gold here. And <laughs> Tim wants to go for a massive ram push. But there's two Krepos. There's a castle going up. I don't think they have enough to dive underneath these buildings, China B. Update over here. There's not a lot of eco left for CL. CL's rebooming in the corner. And you have Yo halfway to the next age. Uh, does Yo have a castle yet? He doesn't. That's kind of a bummer because he could get his unique tech, which would mean his cavalier would attack faster. But that might not matter now that Lix is an imp and can make trebuchets. Awesome. Lix choosing to push in here before the upgrades. It wouldn't even surprise me knowing pro players as... Oh boy. Yo found these bills. There's a lot of villagers over here. It wouldn't surprise me if Lix didn't know that Arbalest is not available to the Tars. Because I, I didn't know. You'd never do that. He probably knows. Who am I kidding? Yeah, the rams did not work at all. Yo will happily lose a few knights to take out all those rams. And now there's no answer to the trebuchet. That trebuchet will slowly take out the castle. And that's the only building that's really securing that all-important gold. Look at CL's town center. <laughs> that's desperation right there. They're town center buddies. Tim had sent some Aaron by over here, I guess, to clear some of that. Uh, and CL had seen some of his cavalier. I say some. He doesn't have many. He's only at 15. And the GG must have been called there. This score is 1-1. One to one. I went back and forth in that game. But I really think it came down to that fight against the Arambai. Lix, he lost so much eco. He even lost low numbers of crossbows. But he still was able to get a mass. Because 3 archery range production is faster than 1 castle Arambai production. And the... Three thumb ring paid off. I think it was a massive mistake for Tim to take that fight. Tim thought the fight would be better for him. Tim probably clicked bloodlines, but didn't have the resources for bloodlines when he clicked it. And so it didn't come in. He was fighting with only 60 HP Aaron by instead of 80 HP, and that might have made a difference there. Um, also, how much of a beast was Yo in this game? I mean, Licks. He was, he was really the key for Yo, because if Lix wasn't able to, to kill the Arambai, then Yo wouldn't have been able to do what he wanted to do. But Yo built Krepos in the middle. He boomed in the middle, and he has 111 bills at this point. So he was booming, securing the middle, and also cleared up most of CL's main base. That was very good response from China A. And now it gets fun, because we'll move on to a China B home map. 102 kills there for Lix. Um, there's the eco for yo, more food, more wood, more stone, and then Lix had more gold, and it's getting spicy.
Yeah, Yo also got his revenge a little bit, too. It's a good point. Um, and he, he got to show Tim what towers taste like. Though I don't think Tim was bothered by that too much. All right, so the score is now 1-1. One to one. Um, Golden Pit and Arabia have been played. The home map for China B, that is their deadliest, is definitely Nomad. It's awkward to pick that against Yo and Licks, because I think Yo and Licks are arguably just as good. So you could go Ghost Lake, but those are their options. And as for Nomad, let's pretend Nomad is coming. What on earth was... What were China B thinking picking Persians for Golden Pit when Nomad's upcoming? Persian Spanish is an amazing stack. Oh, you know what? They're going to go Spanish Mongols. They went Spanish Mongols a bunch in the group stage. I think Tim and CL, if it is Nomad, will go Spanish Mongols. And then we'll probably see Malians and... Hmm. Well, Malians is a top tier pick for Nomad. You could also argue Lithuanians, but I don't know if you want to use up Lithuanians there with Ghost Lake coming. What about Vietnamese? What about Malians Vietnamese? Because then they'll know where the enemy t town centers are. I think that'd be pretty good, actually. Also, I just thought of a balance idea. Tell me if this is good or bad. Um, and I'm not saying... I'm not sure which Civ this would be good for. Start losing the baby. Quarantine. Wait for me. But you know how there's only a uh, a few civilizations that are really, really good on Nomad? I feel like if we wanted one more in our current meta, we could have a team bonus of seeing enemy docks. That could actually, that could bring another civilization into the equation with water maps too. Like islands. Like Vietnamese see enemy town centers, but what if a civilization could see where the others have docked? Could be interesting. It's just a thought. It'd be very important on Nomad and Team Islands. Too powerful? Okay. Sounds a bit too OP. Really, you think it's too OP, but you guys don't want me to... Re you don't want them to remove Obsidian Arrows yet. Got it. <laughs> okay, so that's too overpowered, but Obsidian Arrows should stay. Okay. And Saracen Crossbows destroying buildings. That should stay too, right, chat? And shall I go on? <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> Maybe the first stock only? Yeah, the first stock only. It was just an idea. I'm not saying it's a great idea. I'm just pointing out that there's room within our game for something like that to, to mix up the meta a bit. Do you think of island civilizations and nomad civilizations? There's a very short list of civs that are good. That's all. Uh, I'm not sure which civ it would go to, and we'll see. Um, thank you, Hyperion, for the nine months. He says... Time to start losing that baby quarantine weight for me. <laughs> Nine months of support. I, I see baby weight. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm with you just starting in January. I've been getting back on track with trying to be a bit healthier, but with the holidays, it's going to be tough. Okay, so if I can just talk about this a little more before the game starts. I disagree with what Tarzis said. Tarzis said, Tarzis, excuse me, said Lithuanians. And the reason I think Lithuanians are bad here is simply because of what's upcoming. If you go Malians, Lithuanians here, yes, that's an amazing stack for Nomad. However, then you're looking at Ghost Lake and you want a Paladin Civ. Your only option is Magyars. And then when you're going for Team Islands, if you get there, what civilizations do you choose for the landing? I suppose on Team Islands, they're probably going to go Portuguese and... Oh, geez. I just realized China B have Italians and Vikings. What in the... If we get there, China A might be at a disadvantage on Team Islands. Just saying. I'm not saying Lithuanians are bad on Nomad. I'm saying you need to save civs for maps, right? Because you want to have a really good cab civ for Ghost Lake. And you want to have a solid cab and archer civilization as an option for Team Islands. Think back to how Riot played uh, Team Islands with Lithuanians. I don't know. I'm just... I'd be surprised after picking the civs that they picked so far if they used both Malians Lithuanians. It would give them the edge here, certainly. But if the series goes late, if it goes to Game 5, 
They might be in a rough position. And oh, okay. So they save Malians. Malians is going to be the civilization that they will use for um, for islands. And they're using Lithuanians here. I see. Okay, so flip of logic here. It is Nomad Game 3 between the two Chinese teams, the two best Chinese teams in this tournament. Winner moves on to the round of eight. And the other is out. Uh, Yo is at, playing as the Lithuanians in the blue. And then you have Lix in the green. Lix is Vietnamese. Now Vietnamese top tier Civ because once the town centers are up for the enemy, you will know exactly where they're at. And they're close. CL is here as the Spanish. CL wants to safely fast castle as the Spanish. Oh, it's not that great <laughs> of a spot, especially if the Vietnamese player will know exactly where you're at. And then Timmy Boy is way on the other side as the Mongols. Now that is a good spot with all the hunts and being very far away. But I want to break down why Lithuanians are great on Nomad, all right? And it all comes back to them starting with the extra food. So the first thing you want to do with Nomad is build a dock and a house. Second thing is the TC. Ideally, you do that all at the same time. And then with Nomad meta, you create villagers, you send them to wood, and you start making fishing ships. And then right around the time that you need food, you collect a boar or a sheep or something with your vills. But since Lithuanians start with so much food, they can delay when they need to pull villagers off of wood, meaning that they can get a big fishing ship lead over the enemy, if that makes sense. So uh, it's similar to Persians, how Persians have, they start with more food and wood, and so they can dock and make a fishing ship. Uh, Malians, their wood buildings are cheaper, so they can make more fishing ships. Spanish building faster, so they can build the TC faster, build the dock faster, make fishing ships. It all does come down to fishing ships. And if we're talking about that, it's landlocked here, and this will be interesting on water because CL, CL is going to have the safest fish boom he's ever had in his life. Because he's going to be protected by Tim on water. This is really good for CL. There's no way that his fish can really be harassed unless they go through Tim. You loop all the way around here past Tim's dock. to see turkeys, turkeys, turkeys. Here's Lix's dock. And then you have Yo's dock. And I'm unsure on who would have the win water roll for the team. But I think it would normally be the Lithuanian player who would go faster feudal to win water. So if Yo wants to double dock and try and fight with fire galleys, it's going to take him a long time to threaten the enemy on the other side. But this is this is Lix, and Lix will, will be able to tell Yo, hey... Tim's on the far side over there. Let's strategize. Let's think about this a little bit. Weakening the board with the town center. The classic nomad trick when you don't have many vills. Finishing it off with the villagers. And now we have a pause. Yeah, Tim's town center has been spotted. And CL's town center has been spotted. That's so close to the shoreline. I think you could argue just having Lix tower rush him. Because a Spanish player wants to have stone. This is the only stone. Lix won't know that exactly, but that's a really bad spot for the Spanish player to be in. 1890, hey Chad, hope your day is going awesome. What's up, RPG Jenkins? Welcome. You should change your name to RTS Jenkins. RPGs aren't bad, though. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, everything's going good today. This is one of five best of fives in the round of 16 in the 2v2 World Cup. It is live, which is why we have to wait for whatever the pause is. <laughs> Mortello the Railgun says, how many fishing ships to build on Nomad? You know what, Twitch chat? I'm going to let you answer this. How many fishing ships do you build on Nomad? <clears throat> Come on, chat. Get with it. Only one person said depends. Really? Thank you, Ducks. Okay, a few other people said depends. Um, it depends. So, you want to make as many as possible where it's not risky that you'll lose them. So let's talk about the rolls for a second. CL, he wants to go fast castle with a fish boom. He's not going to play defense for his fishing ships. So this is why I talked about his position being so good. So if he knows it's landlocked and Tim is here, he should make all the fishing ships he desires. And then Tim has to worry about defending him. Um, as for the others, 
But I think in particular, Yo. Yo is going to have a lead with fishing ships. You can see this all because of the bonuses I explained earlier. And holy crap, Tim's build. Tim is a 10 eco right now. This is awful. He doesn't even have one fishing ship out yet. Aye, 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 aye. But um, anywho, I think for Yo, you want to make as many fishing ships as you can as you can until your resources are set to go feudal and then you just make a second dock and third dock and start making fires but it largely depends oh what happened over here oh my god see <laughs> cl spotted lix's bill walled it in and then just punched her down and now quick walls and cl is going to run away so cl with the first kill of the game with a villager I think Lix was actually uh, starting to wall this up and CL had spotted that. And now look at Lix. Lix is trying to wall in these resources. Oh my god. Lix. He created a prison for the enemy villager. Oh, do it again. 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 Do it again, please. Oh. Guys, Tato's been doing this in ranked Nomad games. And he's walled in multiple enemy villagers this way. You can... Oh! What the... What the? Ah! Revenge! Nomad! Ugh! Oh, damn. This is ridiculous. So that villager has to break his way out. I think he's attacking the wrong palisade. Hey, he's attacking the full HP palisade. I don't know what's up with that. But this is the craziness I expected when I saw that CL, who desperately is going to need stone, is so close to everything here. And Lix, pretty well aware of what resources are available. Sees that at least. I just shot that deer down. This is very lamey. But it's what is expected on Nomad. Now is Lix going to have the balls in a tournament to try the wall thing again? Wait for it. <laughs> this is so dumb, man. <laughs> I remember a time when Age of Empires was not about this. And then something shifted back in 2018. I mean, quick walls were always a thing. But this is ridiculous. Bring us our lag back. Come on, where's the lag? <laughs> the lack of lag really did change the game a bit. Oh, man. Well, I saw that Lix was housed throughout that. And Tim is on the way to Feudal Age. So I think Tim, the reason he's behind in eco numbers is because he opted to collect a lot of punt so he could have a super fast Feudal. He's got five on gold, so expect a second dock at some point, And he will send fires around update on this villager oh yeah Lix just walled in the vill and is now going to shoot the boar yeah Lix is doing whatever he can to delay cl from getting to castle age comfortably because of how dangerous spanish can be if they get there but good luck killing that villager and i guess on the bright side for cl he is walling up Hi. he actually misclicked this i think he meant to click the palisade and he clicked the deer so he's eating the deer instead okay. Hopefully that won't haunt him. But um, that stone is very towerable. Yeah, you can lame resources with villagers. It is allowed. On all the maps, it is allowed. Nomad, it's been a thing for many, many years. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is amazing. Wait a second. Let's see if they scouted it with turkeys. Okay, did not see that dock. Did not see the other dock, but I think maybe CL scouted. Okay, so here's the deal. They'll be scouting, or they did scout with turkeys. CL just lost a villager here. Um, and they'll try and find the enemy dock locations. The fact that Tim has his dock swung up on this side is huge. He's going to be heading towards the north, so he's not going to be pressuring Yo. Yo's going to have a crazy fast castle time with that much food be dangerous but yeah we'll see um i just don't know if it's worth attacking Lix's fish you want to attack yo's fish so i think i'd feel better about tim's position if he was heading to the south because yo is not really going to be defending himself that much on water as he's going with a market and a blacksmith and he'll be going castle age Smile. not only will he be going castle age but he'll be going castle age with a very good idea of where cl is and where tim is to the Vietnamese bonus. <laughs> Here comes one fire. Smart play would be to send the rest to the south. 
against him actually has a fire here. If I'm Lix, I do not send my fishing ship over to Yo. I'd be pissed if I were Yo. Like, stay away. Yeah, good move from Lix to let it die. That was intentional. See, El is scouting with his fishing ship for the team. They're looking for uh, the dock. And there's the signal. They'll say, hey, this is where his fishing ships are. Let's go get them. Trying to be have a chance in this game. They need to have the Spanish player on Conquistadors. Oh, CL sneaking over to this stone. Okay. Because he knows this will be towered. Yeah, they need CL to be on Conquistadors. And they need to take Yo off of water. And they need to defend from whatever Yo is sending their way. It's going to be a lot. I think Yo will add a stable. Yo will start making my, uh, monks and knights. I just said mites. Whoops. Lix's position, though, he's also FC. He's on stone, and he wants to, instead of tower, maybe go for a castle drop. I guess he can see that the villager's not on stone there. Yo trying to defend on water for now. Very important. Just remember, stone walls for Tim. Tim's Mongols, if he can get to stone. Which, again, he seems... These guys seem to be so unlucky with their TC positions. The stone is very much not comfortable. But if they, he can get the stone, we'll have Mangadai, we'll have Conks, some crazy ranged unique units for China B. But Lithuanian's so strong, Yo playing them so well. I also saw he had a range. I'm curious what will stem from that. He might be tempted to just go Elite Skirmisher. Big demo. Oh, that's a very good demo right there. I think there's not a lot stopping you from going Elite Skirm if you know that Mangadai and uh, Conquistadors is what the enemy is going to be making. Kid Boga! What's up, Kid? How's it going? I was watching your stream yesterday, actually. Hope everything's good. Boga Hayes in chat, please. Mm. Also, you could get Imp Skirm long term. That's true. Yeah, look at Yo. Yo realizes Tim's focused on water. I'm going to pressure him on land. Uh, just one town center. What in the... what? Nomad's so crazy. <laughs> we have a fast Lithuanian Spearman. Who would have thunk that the faster Spearman bonus would pay off against a villager in Feudal Age? That bill will go down. Tim's on the way to Castle Age, but there's about to be Siege attacking his town center. Now, update on this side. Lake's dropping a big old castle right on top of CL. However, CL will be in Castle Age, and CL could make conks because of the sneaky stone over here. It's definitely not going according to plan for China B, though. They thrive on the messiness, but the messiness has hurt them and not helped them in this game. Stone walls for Tim. That's great. And oh, it looks like Yo found the stone. Is it possible for Yo to deny a castle that goes up? Where on earth would CL even build it? Is he going to build it at home? Because if he doesn't, this could be a problem. Oh, it looks like he wants to place it on this hill. Okay. Yeah, and then maybe you just abandon this area of your eco at some point. By the way, Lix has been able to keep these fishing ships alive. Very sneaky. And Yo has been able to defend his fishing ships. Now, he can't easily loop the whole way around. Remember, he can't go down here. So, looping the whole way around to kill the enemy fish is the only way you can do something there. But, uh, yeah, the castle goes up for CL. He somehow finds gold in a very messy map. Yeah. Okay, it says, lol, I'm not good at this game, but I love it. Type a one in chat if that also describes you as well. Don't ever feel like you are in the minority <laughs> if you're bad at Age of Empires, but you enjoy playing it and enjoy watching it. Hmm. Well, I can imagine how confused one might be watching this right now because I'm confused as the caster. This is ridiculous. This is Nomad for you guys. Look at these rats and archers. Now, I don't think rats and archers are particularly good against conquistadors, but CL doesn't have a lot of of fish. In fact, his fish are idle. He really needs to get a vill down here and he needs to dock. Because that's a lot of his eco. Um, update on what's going on with Yo. Yo is just shifting into land booming now. There's the vill counts. 
He didn't even get Elite Skirmisher. He does have a Maganel here. A Tim has not been on stone, which is a big concern because you want the Mongol player on stone long term. But also, he's going to focus on water, something Yo might not be focusing on quite as much. Let's see. We'll have some big booms here. We'll have two demos for both at different times and a similar amount of fires. Uh... Oh, boy. It was huge for China B. China boom. There's a demo for Yo. I don't think he's microing this at all, though. And Tim is paying attention. Yeah, the focus is over here. And here comes CL. And CL with the conks out of nowhere takes care of the Maganel. Says, you're welcome, pal. And now Yo's fishing ships. But he doesn't actually have many left. They're in harm's way. <laughs> Meanwhile, as China Bee's winning... CL is trying to run to his new base, but the rats and archers are there to cut him off, and now CL needs to run. Oh, this is a ridiculous game. This is ri I mean, he needs a lot of conquistadors to deal with that. He doesn't have the eco to deal with that. I think Tim is telling him to dock here, because if he has a new dock, then his fishing ships are more efficient. What on earth? Meanwhile, the, the Maganels from CL are pressuring Yo, and these two conquistadors are still being chased down. This is wild. Certain teams thrive in the chaos, and both of these teams do thrive in the chaos, but in particular, Tim and CL, they love their Nomad. The messier it is, the better for them. For those that missed game number one, when they beat China A on Arabia, they made it messy too. I think it's why so many people, even though Tim and CL, they don't play a ton, are such big fanboys for these players, because they don't play like everyone else. They see the game a different way. Three TCs all in this spot. So Yo needs to find a solution to this. But this is also as he's trying to remain competitive on water. I think he needs to give up water now. I, I also don't know what you make against this. You almost need help from Lix. <laughs> but Lix is... Like, CL is killing Yo as Lix is killing CL with the Rathans. Not really killing, but... Oh my goodness. Lick still does have some water that might stop soon because you see Tim swooping over that way. And that town center, say goodbye. Just give up on it. And the Maganel? Ripperoni. Guys. I think we all talked about it in some way, shape, or form. About how the map gen did not suit CL and Tim. They couldn't take their stones comfortably. They made it work anyways. And here come the rats and archers. Lix is going to have to save Yo with some excellent micro. Because Yo has nothing now. He lost his fishing ships. He's, he's losing town centers left and right. Here come the rats and archers. Can CL micro? Can Lix micro? He's trying his best. Rats and archers are a beastly unit. We've seen them bring back games before in this tournament. Oh no, the headshot! Oh my god, it was brutal. They split into it. Oof, and that, that's a tough scenario to be in, right? Because Maganel's counter archers, so you try and avoid them all you can. Now, what's Tim doing? I bet you Tim's going to have a free boom throughout this. Yeah, Tim's found stone. He's actually adding stables. With freaking nine villagers, he's building stables. He's ready, and he's going to make some knights, and I think the key now is just to take out... Yo's Maganels, and if they take out Yo's Maganels, then there's no counter to CL's Maganels, and then they can win the game. Just friendly reminder for everyone who's watching across Twitch and YouTube that Yo and Lix made it to the finals of the 2018 World Cup, and they are definitely the better players as far as what they've achieved throughout the years of uh, Age of Empires. Tim and CL are legends of the game. But as Tarz has said earlier, they're they're old men. <laughs> Maybe we're seeing it here. Oh no! Oh god. oh god! I jinxed them. I'm so sorry. Anyways, they um, you know, they're not quite as quick as the other guys around the scene nowadays. But guys, CL, you know, I, I'm noticing he only has 31 villagers. Oh, and he just lost a bunch over here. He really has to make these pushes work because if that doesn't do it for them, 
what else are they going to go for here? Say what you want about Yo's position, but Yo has 58 eco. Tim's going to have to carry. Uh, Tim just showed up with the Knights and took out that Maganel. But three Maganels down. That was brutal. And of course, it was at the point where I was hyping him up. Saying how much of a surprise this would be. Oh, man. Lix is killing more Vils. He's not even hesitating to run underneath the castles. Lix will soon have a second castle. Lix has pretty solid eco. Lix could definitely do this for his team. Stop praising players. All right. Um, they're they're all noobs. It's Loey the Legends. Welcome to Loey the Legends. We normally only do this on Tuesdays. It's not helping, guys. Now Yo's losing stuff. It's not helping. It's him is going to go for a tower rush. And he's going to add his own siege. I think it's good because they need Yo to be in as weak a position as CL. And then it becomes a 1v1. I also like how Tim doesn't hesitate to make knights with Mongols. A lot of players won't do that. It's Mangadai or nothing with Mongols and Castle Age. But for Tim, he doesn't care. Knights are still knights. Knights are super strong. Just because they don't get the final armor in Imp doesn't mean you can't make them in Castle Age in his eyes. Especially when you need that map control, man. CL's been cramped over here for so long. If they clear Yo out of the middle, Yo will have nowhere to go. And here come the Rat 10 Archers. CL doesn't have a lot to pay attention to, so hopefully he's looking at this. Sees it. Oh, there's Rat 10s coming in on the left side as well. That's a lot of Rat 10 Archers. Also, two Maganels. Interesting bits of micro. Yo contributing as well. This is so messy, man. This is so messy. And the micro from China A, so good. Well, hold on. I might have jinxed him. But no, he'll get. In the minimum range of the Maganel, he'll take... Oh! He'll take out the Maganel. But the Maganel did do significant damage. Yo is on the move. Lix wants to drop a castle here. The game could be decided right here, right now. Because CL has another Maganel on the way out of that Siege Workshop. Tim has enough knights. They could maybe deny this castle. If they deny this castle, the rest of Yo's eco is probably down after the fact. Let's see. Is that enough knights against the Rats and Archers? Is the Maganel going to be in time? Lix is bailing. This is crazy stuff right here. Mr. Yo, he might have 57 villagers, but he doesn't really have them in the right spots. They're just running around and around. And all oh, the big shots. The rats and archers are flattened archers. And that shot also misses because of the excellent micro from Tim and CL. The upset. Are they doing this? Are they about to take it to game number four with a 2-1 lead? A castle drop from Tim on this side. Yo's contributing nothing right now. Did I just hear a town bell? I did just hear a town bell. I think it was unintentional, but we heard the ring-a-ling-ding. If Yo runs, he loses more vills. The only place he can run to is over here, and he's already adding new TCs. I still feel like this isn't over if CL can get to Imperial with Elite Rats and Archer. I don't think he has the eco for it, but he does have two castles now. And maybe even three, because his stone count's pretty high. So if he can get to enough Rats and Archers, they destroy Conquistadors and they destroy the Knights. But I'm looking at Tim's eco. I mean, look at Tim. Tim's just going to say, oh, thank you very much. That's a great idea. I'll place a TC there. Tim does have 31 on food, and he's going to have so much in the way of eco. He already has the lead. And so logic would tell you that while Lix might make it to Imp, Tim could be right behind him. There goes Lix on the way to the Imperial Age. Now, it's really important for China B to continue to pressure Yo. Yo's going to try and stonewall up. He knows that he's pretty much... He's, he's playing Black Forest right now. He's just booming. That's all he can do. Uh, and that was a mistake from Tim not to spot that wall. But here come the knights. Knights will take out some villagers from Lix, who's still at 80 vils. Now, Lix could also treb this down. But I think CL, the fact he's on one town center is quite bad for China B. He needs to realize that if Lix is going Imperial, that he could end up being off of Conquistadors if that castle goes down. So I think he needs to be on a second and a third town center. He's got to prioritize eco. 
And he really should have done it a while ago, but here they come. Monday. Here come the conks. Here come the knights. Here come the rams. Here come the maganels. This is all on licks right now. There's been many situations throughout the years where licks have been carried by Yo. This is going to be the complete opposite here. Uh, Lix is going to need God tier micro as he's needed for a while now. To keep his teammate alive and keep his team in this game. Rats and archers are such a sick unit. Seriously. I mean, and when the upgrades are coming, this can only get worse for China B. Lix with the. Oh no! The poor micro! Ouch! And yes, Yo will build a castle here, but I'm not even sure that castle stays up. Can they not just ram this down? It's a little gutsy. No, 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 they can't. Okay, Yo's going to use the villagers. See the rat tens going this way. What do they see? Ah, they want to pressure CL's eco. CL has 15 eco here out of his 41. The rams go down. Tim has 118 villagers, still hasn't clicked up to the Imperial Age. Only 70 villagers for Yo, 83 for Lix, but Lix is making something that just costs wood and just costs gold. Um, he will want to have the food for upgrades, but he has that. The only thing he won't have for a while is Elite Rats and Archer, most likely. Okay, what do you do against Elite Rats and Archers if you're Mongols? I think you go Hussar Siege Ram, or, or maybe even consider Cavalier, because Rats and Archers are a counter to Archers. So you have to utilize Siege. Um, siege or Melee. Melee options aren't the strongest, but maybe Cavalier. See, the thing is, I, Cavalier's pretty bad without Plate Barding. I really think that China A can do this. Onagers would be a good move. Yeah, Onagers would be a good move. It's Normally, I'd say it's pretty slow. However, that's not so slow when it's Mongols with Drill. Um, if, if China B lose this game, it's because CL lost so much eco earlier to Lix, and he didn't switch on the TCs a bit earlier. He's trying to now. And I also saw Coinages on the way, so I think Tim might start sending resources over to CL. But watch how quickly these knights die. I mean, they're just Castle Age knights right now. But against Ratsons with imp upgrades, look at the score switching. China A is coming back. And if they come back, I mean, even if they don't come back, this will be one of the better games of the tournament so far. Him still making knights. I think you go Hussar, so you save gold. And you hope that the higher HP Hussars will save you. But... I'm not seeing a lot from Tim right now, besides the 134 villagers. He only has 14 military. He will snipe this trebuchet, which is, I guess, a bit sloppy from, from Lix to allow that to happen, but... This is wild. Yo still has much better eco uh, over CL. All right, so I see bracers on the way. Yes, yeah, skirmishers don't even work against rats and archers. <laughs> you can't even go... You can't even go for elite skirmisher here. I see the upgrades now. Elite rat tons on the way. I think that... I don't think there's an answer to elite rat and archers. Forget about everything. Just look at the military. 30 military versus like 30-ish. But of worse tech. Oh, Lix, not again. Don't allow this to happen again. He'll save it. Wow. Guys, they can't kill it right now. I mean, CL's doing what he can with these conks. He's actually doing a great job with these conks to be annoying as he tries to boom. But Yo is imping, and there's no way that they can find an answer to these rats and archers. The other thing about Onager is Onager is very slow. So Lix could just run away from that because the rats and archers are so fast. Oh, wait a second. I didn't see this. Mangadai are actually going to pressure Yo. But imagine being CL, you've got 12 on food. You, you can't justify making conks anymore. Look at Tim building panic towers. Oh, I think China B realize that China A are coming back. I think Hussars and Rams would have been the way to go. 
Fleet rats and archers have 10 pierce armor, so Mangadite is with up full upgrades. Ends up being two damage against them, right? I think it's two damage. Now, Mangadite do fire significantly faster. Tim has the resources saved up for Elite. He will have that in just a bit. Um, Yo. I'm not sure what Yo wants to go for because he only has one stable, but I was thinking that Yo would go for Cavalier. But while he'll be an imp, I don't think he's in a good spot to really make all that much. <laughs> what Does this come down to who dies faster, CL or Yo? This is hilarious. Because Lix wanted to push, and now he has to send his rats and archers back over this way to save his teammate. What in the world? See, Tim getting banking, so he'll start sending a lot of resources over to CL. Now we have what will be four Trebs from Lix. 24 Ratans against 25 Elite Mangadai. I mean, what better test than this if you want to compare the fight? What's better? Also, it's my favorite thing when units attack a house instead of military. And by that, I mean it's not my favorite thing. And yeah, the rats and archers holding their own. Yo trying to snipe the Treb and does do so. Him has a lot of stone, but that will disappear quickly with so many trebuchets coming from Lix. CL is, is getting his eco back up and running. I'll give him credit there. Lots on food. Also imping. We'll probably see stables soon. There's a castle on this side for Lix. This is a wild, wild game. The Mangadai have just... Okay, they're going to give up this castle because they're going to build this one, I guess. They're running into the economy of Lix and Yo. And Lix, he has 89 villagers compared to Tim's 140. And that was a huge, huge mop up. But it's military numbers that really matter here. And the Ratsons are chasing the Mangadai. I think the Mangadai should move on from this. Otherwise, they'll all go down. It's not worth sniping villagers to lose all these. You see the armor coming in for CL. CL will go for Cavalier. And I think both teams desperately need some stable units. Him still trying to remain a presence in the back of China B's base. Look at this. Why do units attack buildings instead of military? It's so frustrating. But the mobility of the Mangadai paying off in a big way. There's still rats and archers here. What a ridiculous game, guys. What a ridiculous game. Both Yo and CL are getting the armor upgrades. Tim is losing a lot of castles right now. Gonna run. Oh, he's gonna save these and run around, I guess. This has to be dealt with soon because they cannot give Lix more space on this side. There's a lot of eco there. And then on this side, Tim is sniping the Trebs with his Mangadai. They do have a bonus against Siege. Also, a lot of Mangadai to lose, and the castle goes down anyways. So just build another one. <laughs> Someone keep track on how many castles Tim has lost in this game, and then we'll count how many he has at the end. Look at Tim! The gold, which was his teammate's gold at the start of the game, is being taken by Yo. He says, no way, Yo. I'm going to take this from you. What a beastly performance from Tim. We have Latus. And yo sticking with Latus. So he's gonna go Elite Latus long term. Elite Latus, one of the most broken unique units, alongside one of the most broken unique units in the Rat Ten Archer. Now they are weaker against Mangadai than Cavalier would be, or Paladin would be. They lack the Pierce Armor, but they're much better in the melee engagements. And seems like a good start to the fight for China A. But you know what's what's really becoming obvious to me? is China A are reacting a lot right now. And Lix, he's not losing his Ratans. That's the good thing for them. So they've got 65 Ratans out there, but they are reacting a lot. They need to somehow swing that extra military into being proactive. I think it's about to happen, though. You can only run around and avoid Ratan Archers for so long before it catches up with you, and there's 100 of them out there. Look at this. 37 Ratan Archers. Over here, you've got about 20-ish. The Elite Latus are coming in. Paladin is on the way for CL, but they are losing castles and town centers and villagers to this deadly force right now. When I say Paladin's on the way, it's just now been clicked. 
That's not so good. CL's population. If you add it to Tim's population, it's 250, I guess. Both teams at 250 population. But Elite Latus and Raton Archer is just... It just feels so much better than Mangadai Paladin. But we haven't seen Mangadai Paladin yet, truthfully. I don't think people were expecting this going into the 2v2 World Cup, but we've seen multiple games now where the Elite Rats and Archers have completely brought teams back from the dead. The game with Spain against Argentina in the group stage. And interestingly enough, we'll actually have Spain versus Argentina A in the round of 16. I think that's tomorrow. Look at the score switch. Look at the populations. China A are winning this game. Unbelievable. What a set of games this is. And when it's really close... When there's very little that separates teams, it is games like this, the ones that could have gone either way, that can decide a series. And that can decide the, the future of the teams. We haven't seen Paladin engage with the Mangadai yet. Tim is losing a lot of the castles that he's built and wants to, to use for the Mangadai. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's not the first time either. He'll lose that one and just rebuild it. <laughs> um... They still have to deal with this side. That castle will get trebbed down. They've lost so much ground. And they're actually running low on gold now. Look at how much gold income CL has. He has 22 on gold. He's got 23 on gold for Lix. And so he's about to lose a bunch. Yo is 35 on gold. Seems like there's so much more for them. Also, I love this sneaky stable from Yo. He'll raid that with a... Maybe just a knight there would do. And here come the paladins from CL. They'll run up the hill. And trying to save the precious castles for his teammate. And again, Tim's just going to build it in the same spot. He's like, no, that's the castle spot. I like that spot. That spot's mine. <laughs> I mean, the first one kind of made sense because it was on the hill. But why rebuild it there? That's so funny. Yo has 40 elite latus. 14 plus 5 attack. He actually does have 3 relics, so he, he, that attack's only going to get stronger. Lithuanians getting plus 1 attack on their calf for relic, really paying off. Also, there's only 5 relics on the map, so the fact they got 3 is pretty beastly. Like, I have to commend Tim for his gameplay here. Tim has done nothing wrong, in my opinion. Tim is... He was doing a lot... And CL really should have had a better game economically if, if we go back and end up losing this. But the, the play from Yo to stay alive and get the relics. The play from Lix to keep his teammate propped up for that long. The rebooms that, that Yo and Lix have had to go for. Everyone has played so tremendously well. But my goodness, Tim can only run around and play this game of using mobility for so long. You can't avoid the inevitable here. Tim is like... Tim is like the... Um, <coughs> Tim is... Instead of saving his money for the future, he's just spent, you know, all of his 20s traveling. <laughs> and in his 40s, he's going to really wish he would have saved up a little bit. <laughs> for a really weird, random real-life example, Tim is... He can only run around the world for so long before it comes back to bite him in the butt. Uh, don't tell me Tim's gonna lose another castle, right? Uh, no, he's gonna save this one. The Elite Latest is such a sick unit, guys. 14 plus 7 attack. They attack so quick. They have the highest damage per second in the game. Of all unique units, anyways. I believe that's still the case. Look how fast they attack. Look how fast everything melts. They don't need to deal with the Mangadai. They can deal with the Mangadai if they want to, but it's all about the Rats and Archers there. Look at them. They're broken, man. But you rarely see them. This is the first time I've seen Elite Latest in the tournament. I've seen Cavalier. I've seen Paladin. But the Latest? You need castles for those. It just ended up working out for Tim, or for Yo, rather, that he needed the castles defensively. And wow. What a game. I'm just here. So what a game.
one of the games of the tournament maybe games of the year that was beautiful man oh i would be so frustrated if i was tim because he had an incredible game he had to worry about water he then didn't have stone as mongols he had to expand in knights he had to to boom pressure water do all these different things at once and keep CL propped up as CL was trying to reboom. He was raiding with Mangadai. He was taking fights with Mangadai. He was pushing with Rams and Maganels. Tim did everything that a player could do in a game. Poof. Um, but guys, what it came down to was CL was very much all in, and he was too all in. The rats and archers clear up conquistadors very easily. The rats and archers clear up Mangadai very easily. And I, I suppose it came down to the fact that CL was too low on eco in comparison to Yo. But also the fact that Elite Rat tends counter both Spanish and Mongols in post him. Now, we speculated about the civilizations. We said, where are they going to use Vietnamese? Are they going to use Vietnamese on Nomad? And we talked about Vietnamese being solid on Nomad because of the start. But if you, if you look back to how Tim and CL played the previous rounds... They almost always went Spanish Mongols. They almost always ended the game, win or lose, with Conquistador and Mangadai. And I know Yo at least. I don't know if Lix does this, but Yo watches most of these tournaments because he's casting it in uh, for his for his Chinese audience. So it's very possible that this comes back to Yo's preparation and just watching the games and Tim and CL being a little bit too predictable on their home maps. Man. So, 294 kills for Lix. 94 military. Look at look at that from Tim, though. <laughs> like, if Vietnamese weren't in that game, Tim and CL win. If CL had maybe 20 more vills when he was going all in, he could have reboomed into Paladin, and I still think Tim and CL win that game. But so much food, so much wood, so much stone, so much gold collected... It did not matter because of the rats and archers. So you want to say Civ win. You want to mention those things. Really, what it comes down to is it comes down to... Were there six relics on that map? There's six relics on that map? Really? I thought there was five. Interesting. Okay. Well, six is fine. Anyways, um, the what it comes down to is certain windows that civilizations have. So Vietnamese, I wouldn't say their windows necessarily stronger against mongols and spanish until post imp or until early imp with those rats and archers so really depends you have lithuanians who have that strong bonus in the early game we talked about in the mid game not so strong and post imp very strong so happens with every single sieve <sighs> are rats and archers too broken i personally think just a teensy bit they are but what a beastly beastly unit and what a beastly performance from china a I don't know if they were expecting to be troubled this much today. Um, I, for one, am hoping that China be tied up so we can see a fifth game. But it will be on Ghost Lake. It's the final home map for China B. This has been an amazing series. And I think you have to use process of elimination to determine what sieves are used here. So Team Islands would be the final map. That is 100% going to be Malians for China A. And my guess is Malians Portuguese or Malians Koreans. So that leaves Britons and Magyars for Ghost Lake, which makes perfect sense for China A. For China B, I don't think Tutans are good on water. I don't think Cumans are good on water. Um, so we'll probably have Italians Vikings there. And I have no clue what they're going to do here on Ghost Lake then. Indians and Cumans, maybe? See, the thing about Cumans and Ghost Lake is it is kind of a wallable map. You could go for Risky 2TC Boom. Twitch Prime, I, think it was. I would prefer to have Indians and Cumans over Tutans and Cumans here. But you also could go Cumans Vikings. And you could use Tutans as the landing sieve. T90K. It feels weird to pick Tutans or, or Indians on um, on water if you get there, but you're normally landing with one of those civilizations. So, 
The reason I know it's Malians for game five, if we get there for China A, is because Lix always has Malians and always goes landing. We'll have our answers here in just a second. Um, actually, never mind. We won't have it in just a second because I have to restart my game because that bug apparently still exists. My favorite. I love it. I love dealing with bugs. I love saying thanks to E. It's perfect. Um, yeah, so bear with me. Give me 60 seconds. We'll be in. Thank you, Rusty, for the prime. Thank you, Fingoer, for the two months. SEO for 35. Uh, Nop, Nuts for me. Tetron, uh, Red Velvet, Swarls in Charge. Swarls in Charge says, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> Smarthy, hey, thanks for 49. Gate, appreciate the prime. Again, $1 from every sub this channel has at the conclusion of the tournament on the 20th goes into the total prize pool. That was going to update on the fly today, but I think that's something that's been pushed back tomorrow. Poips says I come here for the negativity. Poips, I saw a comment from you last night in a Twitch chat. I'm not sure which Twitch chat it was. But Poips said, I once stole a cow from Capoch, and I've been living on that high for months. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. <laughs> and I didn't I didn't want to speak up in Twitch chat because I was lurking, but congratulations on the cow steal. Rockin' the Socks is glad to be able to join another stream. Glad you could be here today. Uh, can we see the weekend schedule real quick? Sure, I can show you that. Apparently, they had a restart for the previous game. So uh, maybe that had something to do with the issues I was having getting in. This is the schedule for the entire weekend. It is posted on uh, Discord. It is also posted on Twitter. But for today, which is the 5th of December, we are already casting China A versus China B. After this, we have Brazil A versus Brazil B. Again, certain countries have to determine which moves on to the round of eight from their country. Uh, and then we'll end the day with Canada versus Poland. Tomorrow will be Vietnam A versus Vietnam B. Then Finland A versus Finland B, then Spain versus Argentina, then Norway versus France. Of three years. So going into next weekend, we'll just have one team from each country. Just some countries are so stacked. <laughs> when is Norway going to play? Okay, I had to double check. It's right there. <laughs> so tomorrow, after all the other sets, uh, we don't know the exact time because these are live. I really... <laughs> I really was worried there that I didn't say it. But yeah, they'll be playing tomorrow. When does Team Australia play? Uh, right after they get a team good enough to make it to the top 32 and then make it to the round of 16. So maybe in year 2025. Maybe. But hey, I mean, you know, you could say the same for the States. Maybe we'll get there in five years. <laughs> you know what the issue is for the Australian team? The issue is that one of your best players is an admin. It's just like, you know, Team USA's problem, where one of their better players is a caster, right? Surely that's it. I mean, Robo's been one of the best Australian players for years, and Robo's also one of the best admins this community has. So. I am still dizzy from that Nomad game. Me too. Both teams are just wow. Can't wait to see my fellow Brazilians rocking. Plaza, come to Brazil T90. Quark Strange, thank you for the five. Um, rooting for Brazil, huh? Yeah, it'll be fun to see what happens today in that Brazil. What's well, essentially a Brazil decider in the round of 16. I don't know about that one. Like, like a lot of people are saying that Miguel and Dogal should stomp. But Riot, Goku, and Fire had a lot of strong teams to face off against in their group. I favor Miguel and Dogal in Brazil for Brazil A, but um, I think it could go either way. Yeah, Daniel and Scotty are excellent casters, indeed. <laughs> All right, joke taken, chat. Joke taken. They haven't started yet. The next game will be on Ghost Lake. Thanks for your patience. Just remember these moments when you say, Live! We want live! But no, honestly, the players have done a really good job today. Um... No, it's it's not easy for the players to have to wait for the next set to happen to do it live, and um, you know, there's it takes a lot of energy to play. So, 
Ah, looks like we're 30 seconds away, and it is Indians and Cumans for China B. Yo and Licks, or China A, has Magyars and Britons. I will be bummed if China B loses this for two reasons. One, because I'm already going to be bummed if they're going to be knocked out, because they're such a fun team to watch. But two, the series, man. I want this to end on Team Islands. How sick would that be? Hey, man, meant to pick Magyard. Oh, yeah, we do have some Magyard here. <laughs> I always forget about that, man. I always forget about it, and then chat brings it right back up. All right, well, let's go. Uh, hey, man, I picked Magyard. Yo is here in the blue, playing as the Magyars. I know that Yo and Lix want to close out the series here. While they're confident on their home map islands, which is where it will go if they lose, they don't want to take it there because there is always a chance that you can slip up despite going in with a good game plan. So Yo's Magyars. This is going to be meta for some funky non-meta strat, I'll tell you right now. Because we have Yo that's going to go scouts in the Knights. We have Lix. Lix has Britons on one of the best maps for Britons because there's extra sheep in the middle. And Britons do have a sheep bonus. Plus, they have fantastic archers. There's a back gold. I expect Lix to go archers. Yo to go scouts. No surprises there. Now, Tim. He's playing as the Cumans. And what does he have? A back gold with a flat area. It's not going to be easy, but Tim will probably wall the front of his base and probably go fast feudal for a second town center. Now, there's something really important I need to bring up. There's one restart per best of five, and you can call a restart for a variety of different reasons. Way back in the day, map generations for Age of Empires 2 were all over the place. Sometimes you'd have no hills sometimes you'd have a hill that was larger than mount everest and all of your gold would be there so they implemented restarts back in the day for that reason nowadays scripting is overall much better um and so there's less restarts there actually used to be two restarts for best of fives i think at some stage and uh so while it is something that is incorporated into age of empires still you don't see a lot of restarts because it's not needed most of the time but I think you need restarts if you're going for a strategy that's heavily map dependent. And right before this, I wasn't told who used the restart, but I'm 100% certain that CL and Tim used their restart. And it was most likely because Tim didn't have a good map. So he has to play with whatever he has now. This is good, but the front of his base is going to be very exposed, very open, very risky if he does not want to make military. You look at his teammate CL, the expectation is that CL will wall. Would probably go for scouts. CL stonewalled in game number one. He's stonewalled a lot. Even with Indians, I'd kind of expect it here. So yeah, that's everything I have to say. Uh, that and the fact that if Lix wants to go fast castle, go ahead and try it, my friend. Look at all the sheep here. That's 900 food because Lix was able to get to the middle and find the extra sheep. I don't know what type of black magic he was using to find those. Because every time I play on this map, I know the extra sheep are out there. But either the enemy finds them before I do. Or I only get one or two. That's crazy. And he's already adding a barracks. So I think he's going to drush. And then go fast castle. And this is a good idea because you can harass him before he gets fully walled. And you upload a build order of Archer into Knights. Superhero, there is a build order of, of Scouts into Archers, which is similar. It's on YouTube. Archers into Knights isn't... isn't um, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's really a build that you see frequently. You'd have to adapt that one, but... You have Scouts into Archers, which could be Knights and Archers in Castle Age, which can work quite well. Why are map scripts not perfectly symmetric? Well, I think that's, that's what makes Age of Empires unique, right? I think Age of Empires would be very boring if you could look at your map and say, okay, my enemy has a forward gold too. You know, you should have to scout the enemy. I, I don't think symmet symmetrical maps are a great thing for our community. There was a show match with uh, mirrored maps. I think it was Viper and MBL not too long ago, and I did not like it. Like, I appreciated it, right? I appreciated the concept. Ooh, okay, Lix has to run away now. But yeah, I didn't think it was a real great idea. But, you know, it does bring some element of RNG into the game. 
And depending on what side of that you're on, that can be good or bad. <laughs> um, that's just Age of Empires for you. So the, the idea is to minimize RNG and make it so it's as fair as possible, which everyone does their best. Okay, so Tim is on the way to Feudal. Notice how Tim doesn't have a barracks. This is definitely to go for a 2TC boom. Tim didn't wall this. Lick's expecting that, is saying, okay, I'll let you do that. I'm just going to go up to the next age ASAP. Yay. And so the militia will not kill, but they are harassing. Update on the other side. We have the scouts fighting. And Yo is actually going fast castle as well. So we have China A adapting to China B's decision to go Cummins. And what's particularly interesting about this is that you have CL still going for scout. So CL is going to be the only one making military and feudal. His teammate Tim is not going to make military, but Tim is going to boom. Wouldn't surprise me if he places the town center here, but I think the smarter play is back here. Okay, so he's going to place the second town center. This is unique to Kumans. Kumans also, as a team bonus, have higher HP Palisade walls. Not fully walled yet, but... Hmm, the deer either wants to be eaten or... <laughs> That's really funny, actually. You know what I wish Tim would have done there? I wish he would have placed Palisade, 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 Palisade. When the deer would run back, it would run... It would have to path towards the town center. Okay. Uh, Phantasmal Killer, thanks for the five. This Drush did harass and did keep him off of some resources. But... Ultimately, he was never going to kill anything. Lix only made two militia. He, he didn't care too much about that. These villagers are currently not collecting resources. That's a payoff for Lix, if you ask him. And he'll be clicking up soon with... Yeah, he'll, he'll be in a good spot to go up towards Castle Age. The text-to-speech minimum for bit donations is the same uh, amount as it would be for regular donos. So, it's 500 bits the person who asked for that i already missed your name all cavaliers is my contribution to the prize pool. thanks thanks for the four months with prime yeah man prize pool right now is is over thirty thousand. could be higher cl has to decide on how many scouts to make here and i think the answer is no more why would you want to make more scouts when the enemy's walled up I think this will lead to a very dangerous situation for China B. Because Tim is going to be without military with crossbows and knights on him before his teammate can contribute with camels at this rate. How many gift subs if we see an elephant archer? Ah, you want to play this game, huh? I'll do it. 25. 25 gifted subs. I'll give 25 subs to the stream. Just as long as every single person who's here also gifts a sub. So we just need 7,400 gifted subs. Oh, you guys are in? Cool. Okay, 7,400 gifted subs, and I'll give 25. I think it's worth. No, I'm kidding. I'll do 25. If we see an elephant archer, I'll give 25. You guys don't have to do anything. Because we won't see it. <laughs> I, I, I'm tempted to say more, but I've... I watched the Legend of Looney Loser video again recently, and I remember dropping 250 bucks on gifted subs <laughs> because of a bet. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know what'd be crazier, seeing Elephant Archers in competitive play or Looney Loser winning that game. Hmm. Horny Huskarl. What a name. Sorry, bud. Is it just me or is CL's eco really bad right now? Look at this. Only 11 on food, 13 on wood. I don't think his uptime is going to be very impressive at all. He'll count for Tim looking good. He's going to be above 40 here in a second, but I think this is an invitation for Lix to maybe come forward Siege Workshop. Go crossbow Maganel Siege Workshop here and just batter that TC down and take him off of gold. Hmm. Tim is looking to scout that. He knows archers are coming. That's not going to be a surprise, but I think he'll want to keep an eye on this. It actually would make a lot of sense 
for CL to keep some scouts forward to maybe pick off any Vils if Vils come forward. I'm not saying that's necessarily the play. Maybe you just go crossbow knight, break through the walls, and that's it. Maybe you don't need to go for forward siege. Maybe you can just boom. But, um, two stables for yo. There's going to be a whole lot of aggression. Maybe it wasn't the play to have CL go for scouts. Maybe it would have been wiser to have CL instead just go fast castle into camels. Now, on the bright side, the eco is going to be pretty solid long term because of all the eco upgrades. And there goes CL. I guess that's not the, the worst uptime ever. We'll see. It's a risky play from China B. Pre-planned, obviously, because they drafted the sieves. And here comes archers from Lix. Now, when I was talking this through with a couple teams training for this tournament, we talked about this strategy, and we I've seen this happen quite a few times, right? Do you think it's better or worse for China A to attack yellow over red? I guess to rephrase that question, what do they benefit more from? Attacking Tim or attacking CL? It, it really does depend, but I think if they, let's say they kill five villagers at CL's base and set him back, then Tim's at 50. I think they're actually worse off attacking CL. But then again, like, do you want to leave the player who's booming two TCs untouched so he can carry? Or do you want to attack the person who is booming and leave yellow on his own? Because Yo is already, in theory, ahead of Yellow. It's hard to say. But CL will probably expect to lose the stable. The extra attack from the Magyar is helping out. And these villagers probably cannot comfortably wall behind, but they really need to for CL. What's he waiting for here? Why has he not placed a building? Siege workshop. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. He was obviously waiting for something. It was either that or a town center. All right, villagers going down. And villagers are expected to die here. This is a 2v1 situation. Can China A kill enough before Mr. Tim arrives? Oh, this is some crazy damage. Because of the siege workshop making a Maganel, he cannot make a panic TC, and now we have a pause. Okay, this is a strategic pause if I've ever seen one. CL and Tim know they're out of the tournament if they lose this. So they're pausing because BRB bathroom break, but they are 100% talking about what's about to happen. So, okay, now they're, they've unpaused, but Tim is going to have 55 villagers, two stable, maybe even three stable knights. So CL just has to stay alive. CL is no stranger to low villager counts if you watch the previous game. So... Um, oh wow, that was funny. He just sniped that knight there. These villagers are really in a bad spot. Yo wants to take out the Maganel. The villager, what? CL! Did Tim not tell CL he unpaused? What? All right, well, we talked about it before it happened. I think the damage was worth it here. The damage seems well worth it here. Let's see what type of damage Tim is going to be able to do to uh, China A. But at this point, China A just have to brace themselves. And I think they'll be fine. I mean, CL has done it. He hasn't really done a terrible job. There's just nowhere he can go with his bills. Like, that should... These villagers should have never died, in my opinion. But I guess he only has so much space inside the town center. CL, 24 villagers. And Tim has to come save the day. Update on Yo's situation. Yo adding the second town center. And so you add up the vill counts. It's about 85 for both teams. Another game where Lix and Yo, they seem to be together as a team. And another game for China B where CL's dead and Tim is in a great spot. I don't think you want that. Also, having Magyars here is sick because you don't really need to prioritize the upgrades in defense because you get the attack upgrades. It's really nice, actually, because you would need defense upgrades if archers were out, but there's no archers out. 
So the attack versus the knights here that are armored, pretty even actually, if you're comparing melee v melee. So it's just more time that CL can't get with it. More time that Lix and CL have. Or uh, Lix and Yo have, excuse me, to get their eco right. It's a risky strat. I think we'll see more of this with better execution in this tournament. When we see Finland, oh yeah, you just know Finland are going to pull some Kuman strategies. I, it feels like it should be over, right? If Kumans weren't in this game, it would definitely be over. Let's see what Tim can do. Tim and CL are known for fighting on. And Tim do it for his team now. He's got knights coming over here. Is my, did my game just bug again? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. My game just froze. The game itself runs, but I can't click anything. I don't know why this bug exists. But if you watch my stream, you're probably no stranger of uh, bugs. So all the statistics will be frozen. The score will be frozen. All the data frozen. So we have to go by feel now. This is the second time in a week. I feel like... Uh, nice quick walls there from CL. I feel like I would gladly take less money. I I'd gladly take less money for the prize pool if we could get these issues fixed. <laughs> like, I would have taken 15000 or 10000 for the 2v2 World Cup if the rest of the 25 k that Microsoft wanted to put in would go to the game. I, I would make that sacrifice. Hidden Cup when it comes, give half the prize pool to fix the game. Come on. This is going to be awkward now. Because I can't really... I have to... I can't even see how many units I've clicked here. Um, but yeah, okay. Let's just... Let's talk about where we think the Vill counts are. I think Tim's going to be around 80 right now. And then it's it's going to be 60-ish for Lix and Yo. And CL... Uh, who even freaking knows? CL's probably at low 30s. So Yo and Lix just need to survive now. Can't restart. I mean, I could I could restart the entire game from the beginning, but that wouldn't be a very good idea when the action's here. Might be a very rare situation for Tim to go capped ramp. End this game in Castle Age. Or not end the game in Castle Age, but just catch up in Castle Age, not wait till in. Big engagement. Tim is diving underneath the town center. There's still quite a few crossbows here, and also there's a mix of camels in there, so they're not so good against the crossbows. But this is Tim realizing that his team is behind, realizing he has to do damage. He is doing damage. And also stop that wall off. If Tim can get to the golds in the wood line, this is not all that bad for him. He's going to have more coming. Also, I like how the weak knights are here to heal up. One of the many things I like about watching this player. Now, help is going to need to come. We have more stables being added by Yo. So Yo's coming over with knights. I also can't click the mini-map anymore. So apologies if I'm panning around the screen. But this is Kumans, guys. The power of Kumans. Yeah, it froze on Tim's point of view, so I can select things from Tim's perspective easier, but uh, I can only apologize for the freeze. I can't see the upgrades that Yo has, but I'll assume he has full armor at this point. And it's all on Tim to do it on his own here. And CL, fortunately, is rebooming better off than he was in the Nomad game. Because he actually has space. So we won't look over there too much. Uh, double Monastery for Lick. So he's actually going Monk defense. He can't take his forward gold. This feels winnable for China B. This feels winnable. It feels very winnable for China B. I know we can't see the stats, but forget about that. If you think about the position, there's no way that Yo's imping. He's got to stay all in Castle Age. It's possible Lix is imping, and that's a castle. But that castle's right next to a siege workshop that could make rams. I really would have liked to have seen Tim take an engagement here. That looked like a good fight because it's Camels v. Knights. Maybe didn't see that army. Oh, man. Update on CL. I'll give you an update on CL in a second. If I could just click at the minimap, I'd do it, but it actually takes longer. Hmm, this might be a trap. Here come crossbows. Crossbows are great against camels. Meanwhile, on this side... I don't know if Tim sees the castle yet, but he will see it soon. And now Tim is running away. 
Yeah, now suddenly, in the second, Tim's running away from fights. That's when it doesn't look so good. But let's look at CL's reboom. He should be four TCs. Yeah, four TCs. I don't know if he should contribute anything now or if he should just boom. I think boom a bit longer. But do you want to have a castle there when humans can go capped ram? feel like that castle could just get rammed down the second. Hmm. I love the new extension. Oh, are you guys liking that? Yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed it, and I haven't been able to test it myself because we added it this morning. Uh, but Overlay Guy's been working hard on an extension where you guys can look at the civilizations. To t um, just add about the civilizations during the game. Oh, the quick walls there from Lix. Tim, you're almost better off fighting this over not been running around an awful lot. He's going to group up with these knights. The rams are going to come out of there any moment now. I expect them to be capped. And big fight. There's not many crossbows here. There's not many crossbows here. Actually, that's a decent amount. What am I talking about? That's what, 20? I can't see the number of knights, but it seems like there's way less fewer. And, oh my god, it's happening. And here come the Rams. They're not capped yet. That was so well done from Licks to hide in that little choke. Oh boy. Can China B do this? And even regular Rams could do a decent job here. This would mean that Yo needs to get Knights over there. Or maybe the Pikemen that Licks is adding to go that direction. I have a feeling that now Licks could be flirting with the idea of going Imp. Um, it's kind of... It's weird, though, because he's teched into Pikeman, so that makes me think it's still Castle Age because Pikeman costs a lot of food. I think this is a big mistake from Tim. I think you, you need to protect your Rams. You protect the Rams, and their cap Ram is different. Okay, I just heard Imp, but I don't know who it's for. <laughs> I mean, technically, I'm frozen on Tim's point of view, but I also was just selecting the units from Licks. So we'll find out soon. <laughs> I think it's Licks. Would make sense. Um, Lix is running forward like he's imping. He's adding forward siege workshops like he's imping. Look at Tim healing up his units. But Tim needs to engage against this army soon. And oh boy, Halberdier. It's Lix. You can see the TC. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, Tim's coming back home with a relic. That's cool. This is a very Tim thing to just add multiple monasteries, but can he engage with knights against halbs and crossbows? I mean, there's only about a dozen halbs there. He has full upgrades on the knights. Here he goes. It's now or never. That will be the best engagement he'll get. That's actually a sick engagement right there. Oh my god. Rip to the halbs. Rip to the crossbows. Rip to the villager. What? CL is still only on 27 fills. Guys, if you haven't been here, I understand people might not listen to me when I speak. So I will restate my words and please listen. The game is frozen. All right. So all the statistics, pay no attention to them. The age is here, pay no attention to them. The score, pay no attention to them. Hard for me to know when people are trolling or not. Usually, it's because people are coming in and out of the stream. Oh, Yo's an imp. Okay, that's that's nice to see. Yo's in Imperial. We're casting like it's 2001. Actually, not even, because in 2001, I think we'd be able to know what age people were in. But, uh, it's all right. We can go back 20 years. It's fine. So now we have Magyar Cavalier with Halberdier, and it's against Knights and Camels. Unfortunately for China B... Their chances are looking about just as bad as the spectating tools we have for Age of Empires 2 DE. It's just not pretty. Not pretty. Probably should be better. Could have been better. And the Trebs are coming forward now. And I think if it's not now, it's never for China B. What a series. I see some camels ugh, way over here raiding. And Yo just reacted to that. Are those heavy camels? Those are heavy camels. But heavy camels against Halberdier is not so pretty. And that's all they're going to really have is knights 
and camels against straight halb. One of the rare moments where you can go straight halb and get away with it because there's not archers out. These camels are doing work with the raids, though. We also have halberdier for Yo. I think Tim and or CL, if they have a chance, it's going to need to switch into some type of range, and I don't think they have the time. They do not have the time. Um, neither do we. Time is frozen, but... Uh, oh, don't tell me we're going to see an elephant archer. When I say range, I don't mean that type of range. If he makes a freaking elephant archer now, because they need something with that shoots arrows... <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. It would be a bad decision. They're super expensive. Uh, Tim is losing everything. And sure, rough, Yo had a rough time, but he's here to hear that. CL will not be able to take that gold. That's funny. No elephant archers were good. Imp Camel, though. Imp Camel's in. This very often will become a fight for the corners. I see Yo sending some units towards the corner now. And it's fight for the corners because you want trade long term. If they take the east, they can trade east to south. Yeah, the halbs just shred. So this is probably something some viewers are happy to see. Uh, to see halberdiers. To see... We saw some skirmishers, too, at some stage of the tournament. But uh, the reason you don't see halberdiers frequently is because there's normally a lot of archers out. But if you go for two calf sieves, then halberdier is perfect counter. The same why you don't see skirmishers, because there's normally calf out. Kip checks. There we go. Kip check would be a sick unit against Hal. Tim doesn't really have the castles, though. He just made this castle a moment ago to make the Kip checks. And he now is losing the Kip checks. I doubt he has the upgrades on it either. Back over to the left side. <laughs> I hate how I have to go. Woo! Okay, that's cleared up. Eco for CL is looking pretty good. Back to the main fight. Imp camels and a few kip checks kind of holding. China B does not give up. A lot of camels. If only Tim could make... See, it really sucks that Kumans lack bracer. Because you could maybe consider going for other ranged units other than kip checks. But it's not really worth it. Kip checks are good without bracer because of the firing speed. But you go for a Cav Archer, and it's suddenly very obvious. Okay, here's a castle that you don't get Bracer. And you make the camel noise. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure, after we hit 50,000 viewers again. <laughs> I still can't believe that I did the camel noise at 50,000 viewers for freaking Hidden Cup. Imagine the amount of people I scared away. <laughs> Man, the camels are kind of holding, but now we have a push from Yo. Seems like China A are just switching sides. And again, Yo doesn't have a lot of halbs here. He's attacking the houses. I don't know if that Ting Ting is worth it. Because he'll lose the Treb and still give China B time. Hmm. But then again, CL has to go to the left. And now he's needed back over on the right. I think CL or Lix is going to drop a forward castle. Now, Tim is denying this corner. So there's no potential for trade for China A using that corner. Um, yeah, there's the castle. Your TC spot is a perfect spot for my castle, he says. I think if we will see trade, we'll probably see Lix and Yo use the west and south now. Magyar Hussars. Do you think that... It, it very much feels like Yo is low on gold, but it might just be he's low on gold units he feels like he can make. In game three, we talked about how OP rats and archers are. I mean, if this gets to be Imp Camel and Kipchak against Britons and Magyars, I'm pretty sure that it's a Civ win in post Imp for Kumans and Indians. That might be a big reason that Lix and Yo are not trading and they're just going in for the kill. Speaking of trade, I see a trade cart here for CL. That's not the spot he'll want to be at. Uh, the trade cart is stuck. In between the Kip checks. <laughs> this poor guy. Get out of the way. Dude. It's a weekend. You don't need to trade on weekends. 
see some raids I have to follow. Uh, some light cav raiding over here. That will be dealt with. Still, Treb's coming. Now, this is going to be tough to stop. Also, over here, we see a raid from Yo. And, oh, he could deny the castle! I can't see the percentage, but I think it's a 90-some percent. And that's a Dow castle. No, Tim! And this is as Tim's about to lose this castle. This is as CL's losing this castle. And it looks like, after everything, China A are finally closing this game out. I mean, there's a few small things, like some raids here or there, that are working out for China B. But, yep. The GG's called. And salutes in chat, please, for Tim and CL. I know this game didn't go as they would have wanted. But this brings me back to exactly what I said in the tail end of Game 3. When you have teams that are this good... The games that are 50-50, the games that are really close, those are the games that can decide a series. Had Tim and CL finished off that Nomad game, then they would have you know, lost. Well, they would have played in a different map, but then the score would be 2-2 after a game here, and then we'd be going to a game five. But because of China A's amazing comeback on Nomad and their good solid performance here with the meta and countering this weird strat, uh, they move on as many expected. I'm bummed only because China B showed that they could have taken more games from China A today. But I'm not surprised with the result because it is Lix and Yo. And after losing game one, they recover with three victories and they played very good. There's a reason they're favorites to go deep into the tournament. Uh, an amazing series. I actually can't go to the statistics or anything. Um, so we have to... Oh, now my entire... Now I can't even move around. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I can't show you any of the statistics. And I'm sorry it was frozen. But that was the game's fault. I have to Alt F4 to fix my game. Um, I'll say this though. People who are watching on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed the series. Uh, Brazil A versus Brazil B will, will be on YouTube soonish too. And then I'd like to encourage you guys to stop by on the weekends. I can show you the schedules real quick. We're going to break any... like cool records or just just have an amazing showing for this tournament it's really going to be the people on youtube being able to make the streams so um the 6th of december i think that will have already passed by the time this is on youtube but we'll see uh 6th of december we have the rest of the round of 16 games and then the full schedule can be shown on the bracket and this should simplify it for you the quarterfinals will be the 12th through the 14th and the semifinals will be on the 19th. And then we'll have the third place match and grand final on the 20th. We'd love to have you. All right. 